Welcome here inside of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. It's a segment, see, when things get created on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora or with Dan Tortora Broadcast Media in general, they usually start out as little kids, little fledglings, so to speak, and then they grow into something. Well, inside of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, which you can hear every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on WakeUpCallDT.com's homepage and directly on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT, we started this show on Friday mornings, and it started with John Newman and myself, Dan Chitora, Collectible Corner, speaking about buying, selling, trading cards, and connecting sports cards to life. Then we start talking about life, and then comedy, and then we do impersonations, and then it continues to grow spirituality, God, morals, values, family, positivity, and a little bit of everything. It became more of a variety show. Then we brought Post Malone in. And when we brought in Jordan Newman, we had this opportunity to expand the show even more. And when we expanded the show to Jordan, Jordan keeps a lot of the same that we have. We are all cut from the same cloth when it comes to morals, values, belief in God, positivity, comedy, bringing that laughter to your life. So the three of us became a late night talk show in the morning, which essentially inside of Wake Up Call was more than just collectibles, more than cards. And it became a discussion about everything. So we are proud to tell you, for the first time ever, this Friday, we have officially changed our name inside a Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. The show within a show is now called FML, Friday Morning Live. That is Friday Morning Live. It's a nice play on words. It's like Saturday Night Live, because we're your late night talk show in the morning. And it's a taking a negative and turning it to a positive, which we always do. So just like FML, F my life, now that is Friday morning live. So for everybody feeling negative, feeling bad, feeling sad, we are here to turn that frown upside down and create something cool with you. So gentlemen, and we got to give credit where credit is due. We all agreed on the name of the show, but the person that created the name of the show is Post Malone himself, Jordan Newman. Uh, thank you. I mean, <laughs> I know I came in late and kind of reinvigorated the show when it needed it. I'm just glad I'm part of it. He came in when the show was already successful. Yeah, it's called Carbon Baby. Well, it, 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 started, <laughs> Cherry picking. Yeah. it started going down and then they needed, you know, a shot of life. So here I am. Yeah, we needed a Blake Bortles in the fourth quarter. I A shot of life, <laughs> not... But, yeah, so I, I thought that was pretty good. We're probably a little funnier than SNL is, so. Yeah, I think I think we got a lot to this variety show inside of Wake Up Call. And Wake Up Call has always been kind of the the, the breed the breeding ground. We had the Dan Tortora show that became Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Then Super Powered Pop with DT and EB became an entertainment show. How You Disney with my wife Kate became, you know, its own show about Disney and planning your trips and all of that. And then FML, Friday Morning Live, used to be Collectible Corner. And it used to just be maybe a half an hour to an hour that I was going to sit here with John Newman. And uh, now on Fridays, the show goes to 11 and they've made liars out of me. We've now, we've gone to a 145 is, is our record. So we've officially gone we, almost if, five hours. If we keep going later, we'll have to change morning. It'll be it's going to be uh, it's going to be Friday, Friday yeah. live. It'll be, yeah. <laughs> the whole Friday yeah. night live. It was shorter, and then I came, and then he. Left How about my Friday morning so lights? Friday morning lights, because we'll yeah. be all day. Yeah, yeah. So I like work. that. Yeah. That'd be good stuff. So FML Friday morning live. Jordan Newman came up with it. John, does it pain you to agree that this was a good idea? I like it. I like it. There was, there was a few others that I liked. I won't say them because I don't want any. Because we could use them in the future. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's it's good. We're excited once again. Wake Up Call has been the breeding ground of FML, Friday Morning Live, turning a negative acronym into something positive, and we're very excited about it. We're excited. I'm, exci I'm seeing hats. I'm seeing T-shirts. Oh, I'm yeah. seeing koozies in our life. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of cool stuff yeah, in this. I like it. Yeah, I agree. So I'm excited about this. With that being said, too, we do want to let you know that this show is also brought to you by <laughs> Max George, David Wells, and Post Malone. Yeah, gotta so, that yeah you got to bring it down. Give me that Post Malone love. Look at that. Now smile, George. It's right there. It is there for the taking. I love it. Oh, See, now, and, and, you know, I've said this before. I, I've been told that I look like Antonio Banderas. Bless your heart, I don't. Benicio Del Toro, I don't at all. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, only in Jarhead. And then what other ones did I get? I got... 
Colin Farrell, but it was only the facial hair. So the closest that I've ever gotten is Max George from the band The Wanted, where I am, where my buddy said to me, start doing, he's like, you do impressions, right? And he was, he wanted me to be his wingman. So he said, you know, try and see if some girls will come over this way. So start talking with an English accent, keep your hat off. And so my hair was short like this. And so, you know, I had the hat off, I was doing that. And he claims that it was working, that girls was lo were looking our way, which was supposed to help him out. So ultimately, you know, I will say that the day that Max George is in England and somebody says, are you that broadcaster? I'm going to know I made it. But David Wells, you, you have had a story already about how, how kids stopped you at a game and were very adamant about the fact that you needed to sign something for them. Yeah, it was, it was at a Yankee game. I forgot what year it was, 98, yeah. whenever he was on You're so soft-spoken, John. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know. It's only on air. It's in the morning, so. <laughs> um, you could turn but, up the heat a little bit here like but, Wells did. So, you know, the kid, I was at the Yankee game. I was kind of near the dugout, but in the stands, you know, and they, they approached me, and, and, you know, one kid had a card, one kid had a ball. They called me Mr. Wells, and yeah. I'm like, why do you think I'm David Wells, you know? And why would I be in the stands? And they... They, they insisted. I mean, they were uh, relentless to, to, well, you're on the DL. That's why you're not in the dugout. At one point, I had my license out to show them that my name wasn't David Wells. And they yeah. said, well, if you didn't want to be recognized in public, you'd have like a sec, like a, a not a real license with a different name. <laughs> so it got to the point, I'll make a long story short. This thing went on for like 10, 15 minutes. More people were starting to pay attention because they kind of saw like a scene. And I took their stuff and I signed it, David Wells. <laughs> so but it was kind of on them, though, because they wouldn't leave you alone. And you know what the funny part is? I knew kind of how what David Wells' signature looked so like. So you essentially so tried, Dak Prescott yeah, the whole thing. So I auto-penned their David Yeah, did, did you, you Eli Manning this thing, Dak Prescott the thing? Yeah, so, I, you know, there's kids walking around like, God, David Wells is the Yankees. The game. thing is, they wouldn't, with all due respect, they, they wouldn't stop. They were, yeah. And I, you're telling me they're nine years took, old, but they seem so pretty So here smart. I'm taking out my license out of my wallet. Like, yeah. Th thinking that would finally, like, all right, oh, we're sorry, Mr. Newman, or, you know, no. That still wasn't good. And, and they were they smart had, enough at had, nine years old to say, you're on the DL, that's why you're well, sitting they knew, here. They were serious Yankee fans. I mean, they had to, which that was the other thing. But they're pretty freaking smart, though, yeah, to be nine know. years old. I guess I really look like David Wells enough. That you got you remember this is at that point I'm like 26 years old too. So yeah, you know, I don't know. I but you know I I made a couple kids days. That, you were younger than 26. No, not in 98. 72. 92. I was about 26 years old. Yeah. So, so post. Was, how does no, it? That's no. Well, okay. How does it feel to make to make music and then also? Play quarterback for Bishop Grimes. Um, uh, I've never been asked this. I've, <laughs> I, I've personally never been mistaken for Post Malone in yeah. person. It's uncanny. But I, yeah. I've been, I've shaved for the last. I went to a, a private Catholic school, so I've shaved for the last four years. So. Just like let, just get a, just get a gander at that. <laughs> just look at it. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess if you want to interpret it, like, as, smile, like separated, smile. It is right there. <laughs> it is there for the taking. Separated at birth. I think. I think a lot of it is the non-connecting facial hair. I think really connects us spiritually. The non-connecting facial yeah. hair connects us. What do you guys think about Max? I never knew the guy's name was Max George, but my my buddy. I got in really late on a flight to Orlando. I got two the apartment and I'm staying with a couple of my friends. He's watching the entire house is in the dark. He's got one of his friends over and he pauses a show on E and he goes, go stand next to the TV. He goes, I've been saying this for weeks. Never knew who this guy was. Never knew what was going on. And he had me stand next to the TV so he could take a picture. He has blue eyes. I have like hazel eyes or honey, however you want to call them. But what do you guys think? There's a resemblance. Is there Max George I think there? It, I think the the speckled hair and speckled facial hair is really the main main similarity. Yeah. Nothing else? Not the piercingly I, I mean, sensual eyes? I mean, the skin color, the tone is all similar. I don't know about the eyes. I don't think they're as gorgeous as... Like I'm looking favorite. at the picture and I'm, I'm seeing similarities. Like, you both have two ears. 
Like if you look at the picture and yeah. then you look at you, like they're covered up right now, but I know that there's ears under the headset. Yeah, and David Wells was born with a hat and so were you. <laughs> Came right out with this thing. <laughs> it got cleaned. That's good. That's positive. <laughs> so Max George, David Wells, and Post Malone, just in case any of you guys ever need a doppelganger at any event that you're doing, or if you need anybody to sign for you, we're available. I don't know if all three of those guys would ever be in the same place at the same time like we are, but, you know. I, I think Post Malone's a pretty tall guy, and I'm a real average 5'9". So I, th- I think that would be the bigger... And I don't I don't have dreads or anything. I don't think Max George is that tall, and I'm 5'8", so I could roll with that. I'm good. How, t- how tall... Is David Wells anywhere near you, Newman? What What is he, 6'2"? No, he's, he's probably tall. Oh, okay. He's, he's got a couple than. inches on me. That's not tremendous. They wouldn't know that, though. So, Friday morning live, we got to get into something that we always do. That's our NFL predictions. You can go to wakeupcalldt.com and check it out. We talk about everything on this show, sports-related and where sports meets life. We've given our predictions every single week. We do it going into each game. So, Mike is Mike Sofka of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, as well as the Penn and Trophy Center in East Syracuse at their new location. So that is my pick, Mike, John, and Jordan. All four of us give our picks each week. The white is incorrect. The green is correct. So in week one, I led the charge at 11-4-1, followed by Mike and John at 8-7-1, Jordan at 6-9-1. In week two, Mike took the cake in this one at 10-5-1, then Jordan at 9-6-1, and and John and I at 8-7-1. Week three, 9-7 and were myself and Mike, so we led the charge followed by John at 6 and 10 and Jordan at 5 and 11. And most recently, I've had my first losing week just by one game here. We have 10 and 5 for Mike, 10 and 5 for John, 8 and 7 for Jordan, and 7 and 8 for myself. Guys, what were the... I try to, you know, be bold with some of these picks here with the Dolphins. I try to be a little bit bold with that. But in the Bucks as well, thinking, you know, I should have known that Ryan Fitzpatrick was going to going to kind of get that sensation behind him that Jameis is back, he's healthy, he's not suspended, he's ready to go. Obviously, he heard some footsteps on the sideline, but what game stands out to you the most? What was the most surprising game that you didn't get right? Out of the ones, I think the Titans-Eagle one, you know, you look at that. We all picked the Eagles, too, so they fooled all of us on that one, you know. I think you got to look at games where we all pick. You know, you could say the Steelers, we all picked the Steelers, but they're, they're but the Ravens the are always always yeah, they play them well no matter what. Game, yeah. it's tough. So that one I'm not shocked by the way the Steelers are playing. I'm a little disappointed. Um, you know, so I, I'd probably pick the Eagles uh, Titans game as probably the, kind of the surprise. What would you say, Jordan? What was the most surprising one in your opinion? Um, probably Falcons Bengals. Like we all picked Falcons, and I mean the Bengals looked good, but it's, it's still the Bengals, and they actually turned out to play well and win when they. They won in a shootout because the Falcons and the Saints do not play defense, so that is the mo of the NFC South: no defense. And thirty-seven, thirty-six, Cincinnati, on the road at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Andy Dalton looked good, and I, it just you don't expect really the Bengals to go out and win a shootout. They're more of a defensive-minded team, so I, I think that really surprised most of us. I would say my biggest surprise of this one, well, I would say it surprised me that the Bills couldn't put up any points in the game, and the fact that after this, it, you would have thought the Green Bay Packers lost, because the, the way that... You know, they, the way that the kind of the air around it was, and then, you know, Aaron Rodgers for the second time this year demanding that his team get better, they won 22 to nothing. Yet, you know, he doesn't like the mediocrity. It's not good enough. I was surprised in the Lions Cowboys game. The Cowboys have won a bunch of games that have completely shocked me and thrown me off. I don't know how the Cowboys are winning, how they're getting this done, because Dak Prescott doesn't look good at all under center. They don't have a wide receiver on the team. They don't have a tight end on the team. Yet the Dallas Cowboys are doing okay, and right now they are 2-2, two and two, which is good enough for second in the NFC East at this time. So I would say that that one was kind of a surprise. And the Browns-Raiders one, this was frustrating. We, we all picked the Browns. Mike picked the Raiders, as you can see. And I'm just really thrown off by this because it seemed like the Browns played the better game. 
They just they, didn't finish it. They were up 14 points with like 10 minutes left in that game. And their defense has not has played well this year, and they've been getting a bunch of takeaways, but in this game, in the shootout in Oakland, they weren't able to come away with it in overtime. I think they're still they're they're a pretty good team everywhere. It's just they still you got to get used to winning again, and they haven't been a winning team in so long. You got to get used to being able to win games. The Chiefs, as you can see here, we all got that one correct. The Chiefs are now four zero. They don't play defense, but they they play a hell of a lot of offense. The Jaguars. Arguably the best defense in the country, if not top two, top three. Jaguars are going to Kansas City in week five. Jaguars defense against Kansas City's offense. Jaguars offense, not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Kansas City's defense, not good by any stretch of the imagination. So we got a really good offense against a really good defense. But we know that, you know, if Blake Bortles could play consistently, he is inconsistent. But if he plays a good game with D.D. Westbrook, plays a good game with Dante Moncrief, and even without, and they have not had a healthy Leonard Fournette in any one of their four games this season en route to a 3-1 and one record. So what do you think about, I think this is the matchup of the week, in my opinion. I think yeah. this is a big-time game. Yeah, this uh, in Kansas City, right? In Kansas yeah, City, yeah. I think you go with the home team, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't see Bortles shoulder in the weight in this game i just don't i think you hate him so much i don't hate him i'm just he's not he just put up his record for yards in a game with 388 388, which isn't that's not mind-boggling and you're facing a guy in mahomes who hasn't thrown a pick all year and seems almost like he doesn't make mistakes so now i will say this at some point like i think mahomes is the real deal but I can't see these 14 lights touchdowns, out, no interceptions. These lights out games. He's, he's going to have a clunker in here yeah. somewhere. Is it this week? Well, what? the thing is they can't outscore everybody. And the, and the thing I always say about Blake is he doesn't have to be elite. He just has to be a little bit above average, which he is. And <laughs> to get the ball up and down the field in this situation, they haven't played a defense like the defense that they're going to face. The Jacksonville Jaguars are not only a takeaway defense, but they're a scoring defense. So I think that this could be a trip up, and you know this could be the first interception that we're going to see Pat Mahomes throw. Uh, I think Denver's defense is pretty good. I mean, obviously they're not the Jags, but I still think their defense is pretty good. Eventually, the Chiefs are going to have to meet halfway with themselves because Mahomes not going to play at this level, yeah. but their defense I don't think is as bad as they played. I think they're eventually going to kind of level out. Mahomes will come more back down to earth, but their defense will get most likely better progressively throughout the year. So I think they'll still be able to play at a similar level as they are. So when we look at this situation in this scenario, we're going to pick our games right now. So let's get into that and let's pick these games up. Once again, we're on wakeupcalldt.com, and you can check us out there 24-7, 365. You can see everything that we have here. So I went to the Fantasy Football tab. You had to go to NFL Predictions, and we're going to put these up right now. So, And then we'll refresh the page for you. Titans at the Bills, gentlemen, what do you have? I don't know. I don't think – I will tell you this. Take the under here. You know, I think this is going to be a low-scoring game. I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna take the Bills. I'm probably gonna be wrong here, but I think the Bills are every other week. One week they look good, then they don't. I think this is the week they look good again. So you're gonna take the Bills in this so, one. An ugly win. They're gonna sneak out some kind of ugly 14-10, 17-14 type. Well, the game. the thing about the Bills is they're winning games they're not supposed to. Yeah. But so are the Titans. The Titans just. And I can't even say the Titans look good. They're just doing enough. Marcus Mariota is doing enough to win the game. What do you have for this one, Jordan? Uh, I think it'll be close, but I think this is one of those games the Titans, like you said, are doing enough. It's going to be a game where they do enough. Because the Bills aren't going to probably outscore you much. Yeah. So the Titans will be able to do almost the bare minimum and you know walk out with a win. I'm going to go with the Titans in this one as well. I think they'll be able to handle what they need to handle. They were able to slow down the Jaguars who were missing two of their lead blockers, and it obviously affected them. Buffalo does not have any blockers that I would trust in, so I'm going to go with the Titans in this matchup. Dolphins at the Bengals. The Dolphins started out strong, got brought back to earth by the Patriots. The Bengals are living somewhere in 
outside of the Milky Way, I don't know, in, a, in another stratosphere right now. The Bengals are playing well. They're getting it done. Marvin Lewis, you know, they tried to fire him and then decided to hire him back. Craziest thing is I think, I almost feel like the staff met and they said, okay, guys, we got to get rid of Marvin. Mediocrity is not good enough. We got to let him go. They call him up. Marvin, we love you. We appreciate you so much. You're going to have to go. They hang up the phone. Right? Then, within an hour, one of the guys walks into the room. He goes, hey, man, guess what? Crazy story. I heard that some idiot let Marvin Lewis go out on the free agency, and he's available. And then the Bengals president was like, you better call him up right now. I mean, it, it was the it was the most insane. What was it? Two Was it like two days or... 14 hours they let him go then they brought him back i got out some he probably has pictures naked pictures of mike brown with someone other than his wife that's, could be I'll, I'll just go there and say that's what it is yeah and he said you fired me remember these and i have the negatives at home so you could have these i legitimately feel like you know you break up with somebody and you go i'm gonna find somebody better out there all these people are flirting with me i'm gonna get better then you go to school and all the girls ignore you. And in a in a crazy moment of a freak decision, you call that girl back up and you're like, listen, I'll do whatever you need me to do. I got to get back. It's the grass is not greener on the other side, allegedly. But Cincinnati has been nothing but mediocre under Marvin Lewis. What do you think? Um, I, I wouldn't call him mediocre. They've had great regular seasons. He just never gets them over the hump in the playoff. Right. So, but so who like, are we going with? Oh, and the, oh, you're asking me the game? Yeah, I'm going to ask you the game. Um, well, I mean, finish your point, but then oh, you want to ask I just me. think, like you said, they probably looked out there and saw, you know, who's available, and I don't think they probably liked what they saw. And like you said, it was probably safer to stay with him, especially because they've been consistently pretty good in the regular season. So I think they just went more with the safe bat instead of kind of restarting. And for the game, I'm, I'm going to go with the Bengals. I th I just I don't know if I really believe in Tan Hill at all. What are we doing, Mister John Newman? And I I got a I got a hope that the Dolphins win, but uh, because I'm a Steeler fan, but I think the Dolphins got a reality check against the Patriots, and I think now the real Dolphins are. Gonna, they had to Belichick themselves. Yeah, they're gonna <laughs> thank you before they wreck themselves. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think they're gonna wreck themselves, and uh, as pains me to say it, but. I'm going to take the Bengals at home. Yeah. It would make me so happy to have Bill Belichick go into a press conference as ornery, and he always looks constipated. I would love for him to, to go to the mic and just go, uh, the the Dolphins had to ba 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 Bill Belichick themselves, and uh, I will take no further questions. Thank you. We're on to Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati. So you play to win the game. So we have – we're all yeah, picking the Bengals. Frank right? Reich does. Okay. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Allegedly. Ravens at the Browns. The Ravens are playing well. The Browns are playing well. The Bengals are playing well. And the Steelers look like they're the ones in trouble in the AFC North. What are we going to pick in this one? Well, this is a toss-up to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm going, man, I'm going Browns. Okay. Joe Flacco's not playing the Steelers defense this week. So the Browns got a pretty good good club on you got the browns the in this one I, I i think they're for real i think they lost a, a tough one at the raiders they gave up okay that was in oakland they're at home i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the browns it probably proved me wrong again but I'm, I'm gonna stick with them all right jordan what do you got um i'm gonna go ravens i just don't know i think the browns are good i just don't know if they know how to close out and win games yet i think that's still coming and rookie quarterback even though he's good and just played well I still don't know, especially that Ravens defense is consistently pretty good. So, I'm going to go with the Browns because I like to think that Baker Mayfield got the bad taste in his mouth on his first official start, and it's time to respond. Yeah, he didn't really – he played all right, but he had three turnovers in the game. Yeah. Uh, I think he'll clean that up a little bit. Might be enough for them to, to get by the Ravens. I honestly think that the issue with this one for me is I don't know if the Ravens can score – Keep, can keep up with Cleveland, yeah. so I just, to speak. I don't know if I believe. I think the Browns' offense is good. I just don't know if I see them putting up a crazy amount of points. And the Ravens' defense is always solid, almost no matter what. So If they win, you can say, quote the Raven, never more. Packers at the Lions, what do we have for this one? The Packers, Aaron Rodgers, obviously not happy with the performance of his team so far. And if you're a Lions fan, as our resident Johnny is, 
They're not happy. Yeah, which which line is like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Which team's going to show up? Absolutely. The one that played the Patriots or the one that just got beat by the the, uh, the Cowboys who aren't that great? So I don't know who wants to make a, the first pick. I, I kind you of can go ahead and make yours. Oh. Or go ahead, Jordan. Uh, I'm going to go who was the Packers line. I'm going to go with the Packers. I just don't know. I think they might have used all their points and good game on the Patriots and left it there. They just don't look good against really anyone else. So. Okay, so you're going to go with the Packers. Or you're going yeah. with the Packers. Yeah. All right, fair enough. So Packers for Jordan. What about you, John? Yeah, I just I can't. It's just a weird team. I can't pick them. I can't pick the Lions. So. I can't pick the Lions right now either. I would like to think the Packers are better, but what do you guys take away from Aaron Rodgers? I mean, he's obviously earned the right to speak his mind in the NFL, but what do you think about him in training camp and now in the regular season not sounding like he's very happy? This it comes across to me like a little bit of a whiner. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think their offense is great. I think he's great. I don't think their offense is great. I think... They're lacking a running back. I think Randall Cobb's on the, the downside uh, of his career. Their best receiver is Devontae Adams. And even he's not always consistent. So I don't know if they're playing bad. I just don't know if they have the personnel that's lights out. That, that maybe, you know, everyone in the situation always thinks they're better than they are. But I think from an outsider looking in, I think they are what they are. Maybe Aaron's giving them his teammates too much credit which is probably a good thing yeah but it's bad when he's always kind of criticizing them i think they're playing like they they are you know i think he's expecting too much from guys that aren't elite players fair enough what do you think jordan um i think some of it is a slight towards the uh management of the packers because i think he's mad about the whole nelson situation so i think if he points out you know my receivers aren't playing good my receivers aren't playing good you know, we're not doing what we should do is kind of like, well, if we had Jordy Nelson, a veteran receiver, who was probably my favorite receiver, we wouldn't be in this situation. So I think without yeah. mentioning names and without mentioning the front office, he's doing it that way. Yeah, fair enough. And Jordy Nelson uh, has a couple touchdowns. In the last two games, he has one apiece, one in a win and one in a loss. And, you know, not looking like himself. And Derek Carr, definitely not Aaron Rodgers. So, you know, we are where we are right now with that is Jordy Nelson. Fantasy-wise, has been quiet. Jaguars at the Chiefs. We've talked about this a little bit. What are we ultimately going to put on paper? Yeah, this is the game of the week. Like you said, I agree with that. It'll be uh, the game I'd want to watch the most. I won't be home. So I'd probably go watch it on my phone, you know, yeah. from where I'm at. For you is going to be? At the card show. Oh, there. okay. So, I was well. Oh, yeah, because you're going to Pittsburgh and then you're coming back. Coming back. Yeah. I hear you. I'm gonna. I can see this game going either way. It might hinge on a turnover from somebody, whether it be Mahomes makes his first mistake of the year or Bortles makes not his first mistake, but whatever number of mistake it is. Um, Mahomes. Thanks, guys. Three and one. But uh, <laughs> thanks. Three well, and one. I think Mahomes the hot hand. They're at home. It may not be the. It may not be his best performance. I think it might be lower scoring, but I think the Chiefs probably get one. All right, so fair enough. Jordan, I'm anticipating where you're going with this. Um, Just like the defenders with Bortles. I anticipate where he's going with the ball. No, I, I think the Chiefs' offense is, is – I mean, the Rams – or not Rams, but the Jaguars' defense is solid. <laughs> they, <laughs> Continue. <laughs> I just don't. I I see. I don't see Bortles being able to put up the points against the Chiefs, like and keep up with Mahomes. I I think Mahomes is going to come down to earth, but they, there's so many. There's they have so many weapons. Even if <laughs> even if even if Mahomes struggles, he still has. It's the play. only way I can listen to him talk about this game yeah. is right like that. Mahomes, even with a bad game, I think he has so many weapons around him that they can really carry him, even if he struggles. All so, right. so I'm going to go with Chiefs easily. Okay, easily. easily. Let me ask you this: So you're probably going to take the Jags. Have you? Do you ever not pick the Jags? Because like I'm a Steeler fan, but I'll not pick them. I, I honestly think that this is this is the toughest game for me 
to and and I'm not. I mean, everybody that knows me knows that you know for 15 plus years as a broadcaster, I I there are the cardinal sins of broadcasting. One of them is being partial. So, you know, for me, this is really difficult because I think the Chiefs have the most electrifying, most explosive offense. I think the Jaguars are capable. I think they're really good. I think eventually this offense is going to struggle a little bit. I think if Pat Mahomes is going to have a test, it's going to be against Jacksonville. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't think they're going to outscore everybody. But, you know, Blake Bortles does have to be more consistent. I don't think he's as bad as people want to knock him to be. I think he takes undue uh, hatred from that. The great thing about Blake, whether you like him or don't like him, is that he doesn't listen to it. He just plays his game. And every single week I'm talking to people about, do I like Blake Bortles or not? Because it's a question I get asked when I tell them I cover the Jaguars. And in all honesty, I've supported him being the quarterback from 2014 on. I think that he has been the best option that they have had. I, I do think that there's better quarterbacks out there. I also think that he's better than a bunch of them out there. I think that, you know, the Dak Prescotts and, and even the Mariotas of the world and, and so on and so forth, the Derek Carr's not having a good way right now. Oh. So I would I would give a lot of respect to to Blake with what Blake is doing. And, you know, I, the, honestly, he can run better than people give him credit for. He's got a better arm than people give him credit for. He's got a really strong receiving core. And they found a way to win three out of four games without Leonard Fournette for an entire game and any of those games. With that being said, they have one of the best defenses in the nation. But I'm going to pick the Chiefs in this one. Wow. Because it's a very, very, wow. very dangerous game. And maybe it's reverse psychology. Who knows? But, you know, the Chiefs, to me, are the most electrifying team right now. In the AFC, there's no team that's more fun to watch right now than the Kansas City Chiefs. There's no team that's more fun to I watch. Agree. If you're in fantasy football, Tyreek Hill, Kareem, not even Kareem Hunt. It's, it's, it's Pat Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, but Kareem Hunt is a part of it, and then Sammy Watkins and Travis Kelsey and so on and so forth. Kansas City is just really, really, really fun to watch. And, you know, the team that opened up the season last year and beat the Patriots and then fell apart, this team looks a hell of a lot better. I was hoping that Pat Mahomes would know what to do with these weapons. I was hoping that he would come in and be able to at least continue what Alex Smith did because Alex Smith was mediocre. But he is, you know, he has been leaps and bounds ahead. And, you know, they, they're extremely tough to play. I, I want to call them the Saints of the AFC, but I think that their defense, I think that their offense is a little bit more electrifying. I think their defense is probably... I, they haven't played well, but I think their defense is probably slightly better than the Saints as well. Yeah, I think the Saints, hands down, have one of the worst defenses yeah, in the country. And your Bortles comment, I agree. He's played well. I think he has done better than Blake Bortles typically does. I think, But I just don't... My knock with Bortles is I don't see him being the guy that the Jags teams need to go really deep in the playoffs. I think he can get them to 12, 13 wins. It's just deep in the playoffs. You need a guy that can put the team on his back as a quarterback and go out and win you games. And I think Bortles can have a game like that here and there, but he's not a guy I would put a lot of my money on to go out and say, you know, go win us this game, go drive down the field and win the game. So. Well, and I think what it comes down to right now is that Blake, Blake Bortles signed a three-year extension to his contract. And, you know, with that being said, you look at the players that are under under contract right now and, and how long these players are going to be around. And, you know, for me, when we look ahead to 2019 and look at some of the players that are on here, you know, A.J. Boye is still going to be under contract. Malik Jackson, Calais Campbell, Talvin Smith, Marcel Darius, you know, Tashawn Gibson. All these guys still have their contract and their salaries going through that Jalen Ramsey will be there under it as well. So, you know, I think that, you know, Blake Bortles has this year, maybe next year. If that doesn't work out, then then they will seek elsewhere. I just think he's a lot better than people give him credit for. I think he's a lot more serviceable than people give him credit for. I think he's the best running quarterback when it comes to being healthy and being able to run and get a first down when he needs it. I think he's done a lot with a little, and I think that now having an offensive line that can block for him and a running back that can actually run the ball and a kicker that can actually make field goals, that, you know, it's not all on him to be successful. And I think that they're scheming with Nate Hacken and Doug Marone is good. And I think Tom Coughlin being back in the building is tremendous. So if Blake can't find a way to get to the Super Bowl this year or next year, 
then, you know, I think they move on. But I'm going to keep supporting the guy because I see something in him. And mm-hmm. I, I think he's he got a lot farther than anybody thought he was going to get. And, uh, you know, I'm not... I'm not surprised at what he was able to achieve with the right pieces around him. Yeah, but he needed a lot of pieces, and everybody does. So I think he's the best quarterback named Blake in the NFL. I think no one can argue with that. I love you both. <laughs> yeah, he has played well. It's hard to argue so far. Uh, he has played well. It's just, you know. Second he, all-time in career I like him. behind I li- As you know already, I do like him better than Jordan. When we did our kind of a rankings thing, I put him ahead of, yeah. you know, I don't know, 60% of the league. Yeah, I'm under 50. Or somewhere in that vicinity. So, in good shape right now. Uh, Broncos at the Jets. Let's take a look at this game. And, and and for those of you that are tuning in, once again, on wakeupcalldt.com, if you go to the Fantasy Football tab and go to NFL Predictions, you can check us out there every single week. FML Friday Morning Live is here with you and is the new name of our segment because we became the late-night talk show in the morning. On purpose, but not on purpose, but kind of on purpose. So we're happy to be here with you for that. Next game up, the Broncos at the Jets. Seems like a trap game for both of these teams because they're kind of evenly playing right now, maybe even if the record doesn't show it. What do you think, John? Um, Yeah, you know, it's it's easy. It is easy. I'm going to take the Broncos, um, even though they're, they're in MetLife. I just, I'm not sold on Darnold. They're not scoring a lot of points. They got a running back by committee. That, yeah. that no- By the way, Isaiah Crowell had that great week against Detroit, and I told all you fantasy owners, do not drink the Kool-Aid because it's stale. It's green Kool-Aid, but it's supposed to be red. It's not real. Isaiah Crowell not only got shut down after that, but the Jaguars pushed him into the end zone for a safety most recently. Yeah. I, I just think that Broncos, I'm not, I'm not buying the Jets uh, at all. They don't have enough weapons here. I'm not saying I the Broncos. Think about mine. I don't think the Broncos are great. I think they're just better than the Jets. Okay, fair enough. What um, do you think, Jordan? I think the Broncos' defense is solid, and I think Darnold is a uh, turnover waiting to happen almost every time he touches the ball. So I, I think he can be good. I think his problem in college was turnovers, and it's starting to be a problem in the NFL now. Yeah. And the way the Jets use him is they really don't let him be Darnold. They kind of limit him. Yeah. So I think if the Jets were to beat the Broncos, they'd need to really unleash Darnold. And if they haven't done it yet. Unleash the Darnold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Release the Darnold. <laughs> if they haven't done it yet, I don't think this is going to be the game they're going to do it. So, And I think Keenum's not going to lose you a game. I think I don't see him winning you a game, but I don't think he's going to go out and lose you a game. So I think he's better than people give him credit for. Sam Darnold, I think, is going to make mistakes. He's going to throw interceptions as a rookie. I do think he's better, and I think that we he will mature as the season goes on. I think there's some good that will come from him. But ultimately, I originally thought Jets. I originally thought bounce back for Sam Darnold, but I'm not willing to put it on paper that the Broncos are going to lose this game. Bradley Chubb, who I covered at NC State, he's one of the good ones on that side of the ball. And I think there's some, I think the Broncos, you know, if, if they can play a game 26 24, 26 23, you know, somewhere in the region of 20 something to 20 something, I, I trust them to kick the field goal at the end so of the game. So you're making the case for case? And not Jason Myers to kick the field goal. Yes, I'm making a case for Keenum. Yes. Yeah, and also Darnold's got a fumbling kind of problem. And when you got Von Miller and uh, Chubb kind of coming, it yeah. makes it a little difficult to hold on to the ball. Yeah, when you get excited, you got to have a guy like Chubb. Falcons at the Steelers. Let's start with you, Jordan. Uh, man, it's a tough one. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Because okay. I think they're home. I mean, it didn't really matter last week, but I think this has got to be – this has to be the week that you turn around. If, if it's not this week, I don't think it's going to be a week this week or at all this season. So I, I think this week they're going to come out a little better. I think the Falcons' defense isn't the greatest in the world. So I, I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, their defense obviously isn't – is kind of scares me, especially against the – Atlanta, whose offense is consistently pretty explosive. Okay. But I, I think this is the week Pittsburgh gets it done. So this is the game we're discussing right now, the Falcons at the Steelers. I decided to bring our coaching board out for the rest of these here. It's something that John and I have tested on the show me before. Do my John Madden. Boom! All right, here you go. All right, you ready? <laughs> That's all I got. Um, wow! <laughs> 
Wait, All right, wait, so no, listen. Wait. Can I do the Christopher Walken on the whiteboard really quick? Wow. So you take the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then you take the Atlanta Falcons, you put them against each other, you draw them together. Then if you put it up like this, everybody's thinking that it's something gross. But it's not. It's just a Christopher Walken way to look at things. <laughs> Bang, it zoom, looks, zip, and there you go. It looks like a Nick Chubb. There you go. Nice. <laughs> wow. I could circle. I can square. And I could triangle the offense. Look at me. I'm the triple option. It's not the triple option, but... Okay. He circled three. Cool. I think that'd be kind of cool to do that. And then, you know, in the middle of it all, we can do whatever we want with this. But we can always erase it and bring it right back. Look at how clean that is. So we're talking about the Steelers and the Falcons. Thoughts on this? All right. So what is the Steelers' uh, weakness? Pass defense. What is the Falcons' strength? We not even pass uh, all defense. Yeah. Well, specifically the secondary. <laughs> Who okay. do we want? Bell. Who are we getting? Not Bell. Yeah. Uh, not coming. Not coming and so their their pass defense is terrible, and this is the strength of the Falcons. Is I, I hate it. Uh, I think this is another loss. I think I picked Pittsburgh. You picked the Steelers yeah. though. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna pick Atlanta. I hope I'm wrong. I actually hope I miss this pick. Obviously, but I'm picking I ATL just, Living. I, I think just watched every right Steeler game this year, and I, I, I'm not I'm not seeing it. You know, even you look at the the Buccaneers game, what they won. Two more minutes, three more minutes in that game, they would have lost that game. And then the uh, Buccaneers come back the next week and get blown out uh, by the Bears. So who did Pittsburgh really beat? I'm not believing right now. I hope they make me a believer, but uh, I think there's there's a lot of problems in Pittsburgh, and uh, I don't think the answers come this week. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Falcons in this one too. Their offense is doing too much. I think that Calvin Ridley – and some of these guys are, are, are going to have a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I just, in my opinion, I know it's in Pittsburgh, but I think that, you know, Baltimore hit them, and the Falcons obviously have, you know, at least two to three times the offense. I want to say two times the offense of Baltimore. So I'm going to pick the Falcons in this one. So the Giants at the Panthers. What do we think about this one? This is a battle, folks, of the teams that used to feature Kerry Collins as their quarterback, believe it or not. What do you think, John? I think they forgot that Kerry Collins was their quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Until you just reminded him. Wow, <laughs> Kerry Collins, such <laughs> a great quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Who started? Didn't he start over Kurt Warner at one point? Was it him or was it was that the Eli? I can't even remember. It's how long ago. But, uh, this game's going to be... Kerry Collins played in the Super Bowl against Trent Dilfer. Yeah. That in the was, Battle of the that, Strange. That was exciting. Yeah, I know. From the quarterback perspective. I'm going to go <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, trying to throw me off my game. I am. Uh, I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm going to take the Panthers. I, I think they're at home. I think the Giants got some issues still um, and probably will all year. I don't know how the Giants have won anything this year. Yeah, this game, they might surprise you. They, I, I can't rule well, them Well, that's because the out. Panthers... The Panthers' biggest weakness is their biggest strength, Cam Newton. Yeah. He because it's all about Cam all the time, and that's how he played at Auburn. It was win, lose, or draw on Cam Newton. Now Christian McCaffrey gets involved because he can catch the ball and he's a check down right. and he can run the ball and do everything. I like him. He's so the reason yeah. why Christian McCaffrey, I told you, is the only fantasy player worth getting in Carolina besides Cam Newton is because he offers Cam Newton an opportunity to get involved in multiple different ways. But, you know, I, I just... They're playing the Giants, and the Giants' defense is awful. So you're going with the Panthers? I'm, I'm picking the Panthers. All right, Jordan. Um, I'm going to go with the Giants. I think Barkley's starting to build up and starting to look like the number two pick. I think he's going to do well. And I think Odell's going to have a real good game, finally. So, so I'm, I'm going to go with the Giants. Who knew Post Malone was such a sports fan and football specific? I know. I get Post Malone confused with who's the one? Who's the other guy I, I get him know. confused with? I, no, no. The half past five? Isn't that the his The weekend? Song? Yeah, the weekend. Yeah, That's what I get him confused with. They don't look alike at all. No, they don't look alike. They sound alike to me. No, I'm, I'm going to go with the Giants. I think this is going to be like kind of one of their bigger wins. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that uh, uh, Saquon, I think, is going to have a huge game. As well as Eli. I think Eli's going <laughs> to. 
<laughs> if I met you in an alley, I am 100% sure that you're Post Malone and you have drugs. I don't you. think I would say. <laughs> I, I think we have similar, similarities. It's there. It's there. My long lost brother, Max George, agrees with me. So I'm going to say in, the, in this game, in this matchup, once again, you've thrown me off here. So the Giants and the Panthers, I'm going to pick the Panthers in this one. You know, again, like John said, the Panthers are at home. You know, I think Saquon Barkley, just like Ezekiel Elliott in Dallas, is their best bet, and their only bet at times, it feels like. The, the problem is that line's so bad, he, 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 they can't get him going on the ground. Now they're resorting to just yeah. throwing bullet passes and screens to him, which can work, but that's sort of predictable. A good defense will, will start to contain that. Yeah, so I mean, honestly... I think that the Cowboys have become one-dimensional. And even though the Giants have Odell, they've essentially become somewhat one-dimensional with Saquon. So I'm going with the Panthers in this game. I think they're going to win it. It's not going to be pretty, but it wasn't pretty when they beat Dallas either. Raiders at the Chargers. Could Chucky win another game? Even though I don't necessarily know if they should have won the game against the Browns. Uh, He can, but it's not this game. Uh, I think the Chargers, just on paper, are a much better team. Yeah. I think the Raiders' defense is like one of <laughs> is one of the worst in the uh, in the league. So I, I think Phil Rivers and um, Melvin Gordon are going to have a pretty big game. I'm very confused as to what you're doing <laughs> on the. <laughs> I'm circling the teams, and I'm also making you a smiley face. All right, I guess that works. But yeah, I. I don't, oh, all right. See. It's a smiley face. It kind of looks like, did you guys have that bank where the bank, the robot would open its mouth and you would put the money in the mouth and then he'd rock back and forth and he'd lick his lips and the tongue would come out and then he'd eat the money? Did you ever Um, have that? No, no, I've never. I had a bank like that. I don't know if it was the same one. See, Kate had that and uh, and I had the same one as well. So you're going with the... Chargers. All right. Why did I circle... The Raiders in the... Oh, you want to know why I did it? Because I'm insane. So we were talking about the game that we were talking... That's why you said you were confused. Yeah, because I, I was... Why. Yeah, because I was talking about the other game. This is the game that's going on. See, it threw me off because I just wanted to draw a picture. Yeah, you so you're going as a... You're going with the Chargers. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. John Newman. I don't know. You know, the Chargers are a weird team, too, this year. Yeah. You know, they, they, they're not consistent. Um... But again, I think when you got a game that's sort of a toss-up game, sort of like this one could be, I'm going to go with the home team. So. Yeah, I know. It's not I don't think it's much of a toss-up at all. The Chargers are a much better team. You I was going to say you gave Mike that pick already. No, we're giving you the Chargers in this one. The Vikings and I'm also going to pick the Chargers in this game. The Chargers are one of those teams that have pleasantly surprised me. They're playing better than I expected them to play. So, I'm going to put them in this one, the late night talk show in the morning, FML, Friday morning live. I almost said the other thing that it meant. That would have not been good. Not trying to swear here on the radio. So, and on video for you here, for those of you watching on Facebook.com, and we appreciate it. Wake Up Call D- with Dan Satora is on Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, and Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. You can also connect with us on YouTube.com where you can watch these videos. YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT and the entire archive is going to be there. The next game that we have up on the docket is the Vikings at the Eagles. Thoughts on this one? Boy, the same thing with the Vikings. They're another team. They were my preseason Super Bowl pick and they've, they haven't lived up to the hype. Yeah. Um, but the Eagles are not playing well either. Wentz is still rusty. I think it's going to be a few more weeks before he completely knocks it off. I'm going to take the Vikings. Um, again, a game that I could see either team winning. Something just tells me the Vikings got a right to ship at some point. Okay. Um, I'm going to take them. You're going to take the Vikings in this game. What do you think, Jordan? Um, I, I agree. I, I think, like you said, Wentz I don't think is fully there yet. I think, like you said, a couple more weeks he'll be back. Um, and The Vikings have been kind of uncertain, but I think Kirk Cousins has been almost as good as he can be the last couple games. And I think yeah. with Dalvin Cook, I think being fully healthy coming up. <laughs> coming up I, I i think they'll they'll take it and i think their defense is good good enough where they should be able to come out look at that stare that 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 max george stare 
that's coming at you right now. That's is that's right there. See, I got it. Wait, hold. On. That's right there. I got it. See, it's hard for me to be serious, but in this game, so you're going to take the Vikings as well. I'm going to take the Eagles in this one. I think they bounced back. They were embarrassed by the Titans at home. I don't think they're going to let two at home get away from them. I think the Eagles are going to get this one. Cardinals at the 49ers. C.J. Beathard against Josh Rosen. What do you think about this one, Jordan? Um, I think the Cardinals are going to win. I, I think Rosen's going to have, it's going to be his game, you know what I mean, his first kind of coming out party. Yeah. And I think David Johnson had a pretty good game last week. I think he just built on that and does even better. And I just, I don't know with the Niners, with having your running back and your quarterback hurt, I don't think Beathard's the worst in the world. Yeah. But I, I don't see him winning that game. What do you think, Mr. Newman? I think fans enjoy your $7 tickets <laughs> to an NFL game. Look at that. You know. That's what I think. StubHub, you can have front row, lower bowl section tickets, seven bucks to watch Josh Rosen win his first NFL uh, game as a starting quarterback. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Cardinals in this one, too. I do think that Josh Rosen gets a touchdown in this game to Christian Kirk. I think Christian Kirk's going to come up before the end of the season. I think we're going to see some good stuff by Rosen as well. Rams at the Seahawks. Rams are not what they used to be. And neither are the Seahawks. For the Rams, it's a positive. For the Seahawks, it's a massive negative, which turned off with a bird being flipped in their direction by their own player, Earl Thomas. Thoughts on this one, Mr. John Newman? I think this is the changing of the guard game. I think yeah. This used to be the Seahawks division. I think now it's the Rams, and I think this game is going to highlight that that's where the supremacy now is in the division. So I think this one's going to be ugly. Okay. Um I think it's going to be more issues in Seattle after this game is is, is done, and uh, I'm going to take the Rams. This is this is probably one of the surest bets. Okay. You know, on the board to me. All right, Jordan, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think the I think the Rams. The Rasms. Rasmatasms. I think the Rams are a lot better of a team. I, I'm going to pick the Rams. I think it's going to be a tough game because I think in division, I think Seattle, especially at home, is going to kind of play them well. But I think the Rams are just too good and are kind of going to overwhelm the Seahawks. I think it'll be tight early, and I think late the Rams are going to start pulling away. Yeah, I agree that this game might be somewhere close in the 20s, but the Rams are going to have to blow this one out. They played just like they played the Raiders close, and then the Raiders didn't score that much in the second half of their game. I'm going to go with the Rams as well. Somehow Sunday night and Monday night football confused the absolute hell out of me because, and I'm not saying this because I cover the Jaguars, I'm saying this in all honesty, the team that makes it to the AFC championship game and almost defeats the New England Patriots does not get your Sunday nights and your Monday nights. They do have a Sunday night finally coming up for the first time in forever, shout out Frozen, against the Steelers will be coming up. But this team gets almost no play. Yet we're going to see the Houston Texans and the Dallas Cowboys in a fight for Dallas. And mind you, back in 2002 when the Texans were an expansion team, they beat the Cowboys. So what do we think about this one with the Cowboys being atrocious yet finding a way to win? And on the other side of things, Houston gets their first victory courtesy of Frank Reich kind of not being smart at football. What do you think, Jordan? Um, I think this is going to be a tough one. I, I'm going to go with Dallas. I think Zeke's going to have a big game. Okay. And I think Dak's going to do what he has to do to win. But I, I, I think this one could definitely go either way. I don't. I, neither team is like a clear favorite. How are the Cowboys? Teams like the Cowboys and the Bengals. There's teams right now in the moment in the running for the playoffs that I would have never anticipated. One of them being the Cowboys. Especially how they started. Go ahead, Mr. Newman. Well, I was I believed in the Texans before the season started. I'm less of a believer now. Yeah. I don't think the Cowboys are very good either. Right. I just think they win this game because they're playing the Texans. I think the Texans uh, are not as good as I gave them initial credit for, and, and I'm going with, with the Cowboys. I'm going with the other side. It's a replay of 2002. I think the Texans are going to get the victory in this one. I don't think the Cowboys will have an answer for Deshaun Watson. I think DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller are going to do enough, and they have multiple tight ends, and they're playing at home. 
So in my opinion, I don't think Dallas has enough to stop them. However, that hasn't stopped Dallas this season when they've played against other better talented teams. So they may shock me like they've shocked me in weeks before, but I'm going to pick the Texans in this game. I think that this is the easiest game the Texans have played so far. If they play this the right way, Dak Prescott looks... He looks like he should be a backup right now. He's looking like he's playing himself into a backup role. And it's sad. It's very sad. Red, and the best player on the team is Ezekiel Elliott on offense, defense, and special teams. Redskins at the Saints, Monday Night Football, the final game. What do we have for this one? Go ahead, John. Uh, I'm going to go with the Saints. Okay. I think they're just going to score too many points. They're at home on the turf. Uh, I think the Redskins are a good team. They're, they're doing well, I, but I, I don't think they win this game. Jordan? Yeah, I, I think this one's fairly easy. Alex Smith isn't going to be able to keep up throwing five yards to Jordan Reed all game. So I think the Saints I come up, up pretty Jordan big. Reed on my fantasy team. How is he? In what league? In uh, Chad Merritt's league. How, is, how does no one have Jordan Reed? Mm, like Somebody must have him. dropped him in the grand uh, scheme of things. And I saw Tyler. I had Evan Ingram. He got hurt. I picked up Tyler Eifert. Yep. And he got that. So, Jordan Reed, look out, because every tight end I pick up gets injured. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Jordan Reed's injury comes with you picking him up. It's probably about time for him this year anyway. <laughs> well, so. I picked him up so he can get hurt now. I'm the, yeah. I'm the tight end kiss of death. There you go. So, with that being said, we have up here for you right now. We're going to show you them. We won't have, uh, due to this, uh, if you listen in to the show with Mike Sofka and the Fantasy Football Power Hour, you will get all of his picks. So, for this one being our show, Friday Morning Live FML, you're only going to see our picks on here. So, essentially, it'll be whited out, so to speak, but Mike's picks will be on the broadcast, and you'll be able to listen to those on wakeupcalldt.com by going to the RSS feed, the TuneIn Radio, the iTunes podcast, the Podbean podcast, or to wakeupcalldt.podbean.com officially. So this is what it looks like for us in week five. You will see them all right here. So I went Titans, Jordan went Titans, John went Bills, we all went Bengals, we, uh, Browns for two of us, except for Jordan with the Ravens. We all went Packers, all went Chiefs. Broncos, Falcons for two of us, Jordan with the Steelers. Panthers for two of us, Jordan with the Giants. Chargers for everybody. I went Eagles, everybody else went Vikings. Cardinals for everybody, Rams for everybody. Texans for me, Cowboys for you guys, and we all went the Saints. So that's what it looks like in our week five. And every week that the predictions come up, you'll see them loaded up on here. And you can always check them out by going to wakeupcalldt.com the Fantasy Football tab, and clicking on NFL Predictions. So, with that being said, we've officially given them. Gentlemen, what do we think about our tallies so far and how we've performed in the first four weeks? What do you think, Jordan? Um, I've struggled pretty bad. Uh, I I think there was a few games I kind of went a little risky, and I I was hoping they pulled it off, and they didn't. But uh, I think think now, deeper in the season, I think we're all going to get better picks-wise because we're starting to see what teams really are. Yeah. I think the first four weeks are tough because you're still – you don't know who's who. You know what I mean? No one knows the Bears' D is going to be what they are. It's just difficult when you don't know who. I mean, Pittsburgh was supposed to be a real contender, and they've struggled. Uh, The Falcons have struggled in certain games. So I I think it makes it real difficult early, early on because you just don't know – who's who's a real contender yet and who's not so I, I think you're gonna see a lot more picks be similar now that the season's kind of deeper in this you know deeper in the season I think it's gonna be a lot more consistent and yeah. you're gonna see the same teams kind of in the win column and it's not gonna be as uh, wishy-washy yeah I mean what do you think about it so far my good sir I think Jordan touched on something like as each week progresses you start to see who's real and who's not and, yeah. and what teams really are. So the picks, at least on paper, you should be getting better uh, record-wise, you know. Obviously, you have your, your odd weeks where upsets happen, but the consistency should happen in the picks. Like, the teams should be more consistent with, with how they play. Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of interesting to see where everybody shakes out at right now. And, you know, if you take a look at this, and we'll bring it up once again for you on the monitor, so you have it here on the monitor to check it out. But essentially, you know, this is what we're looking at right now in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, I I mean, 
I like the way I started off. And, you know, there's been some struggles, but there's been some crazy games that have been within all of this. So, I mean, what do you guys think about, you know, the weird games that we've essentially seen? Because the games have, have not all... I mean, I, I, some of the best predictor, predictors in the land, I think, would have gotten some of these games wrong. What yeah, do you think? I mean, that's why they're called upsets. Yeah. Because you don't pick them. And uh, the Vegas makes money on a lot of people on those. Um, I think the nice thing is, regardless of where you rank standings-wise... You know, there's enough weeks left where if you get hot with your picks, yeah, you can you can still win win that you know the picks. Um, where, where no one's officially eliminated yet. No, and and the way it looks right now, and it's funny, we all have two ties because of the first couple of weeks. What do you guys think about that? Uh, what would what what if someone picked a tie? Would that be like bonus <laughs> points? <laughs> I guess it would be bonus. But, you know, I'm not used to having a lot. I'm not used to having a lot yeah. of ties, but. There was three overtime games in yeah. week four. We've seen seasons where there's not been three overtime games all season. Yeah. I think that's a testament to how closely matched some of these really, teams are. Yeah, how I, much I, parity there is yeah. now uh, in, in the NFL. Yeah, I think the league's pretty balanced. I, you don't see teams really run. I mean, the only team really running away with anything is really the Rams and the Chiefs. I mean, every other team is right about. Almost not even skill wise, but record wise, they're almost very all very similar. So, I mean, anyone can be anyone, and that's always been true. But I think this year it seems even more true than normal. I mean, that you you see the Lions beat the Patriots, yeah, with and you rarely see Bill Belichick's not gonna lose to a guy that coached with him just last year, and then you see and they just did not look good, and then the next week they go out and look like the Patriots again. So. I, I think it's this year it's been kind of difficult to make picks, to pick an upset. Yeah. Because you don't know who's the upset, you know what I mean? Everyone's so similar or so close, it's really difficult to, you know, to make solid picks. And to make the announcements for Max George, David Wells, and Post Malone's picks, through four weeks, Jordan, you are 28-33-2. and two. 28 wins, 33 losses, two ties. John is 32 29 and 2 and I am 35 26 and 2. So we're not too far off from one another, but there's some bold picks that you have to make in this. I'm still above the equator, John's still above the equator and Jordan is close to the equator. So, I mean that that's where we stand right now, which is pretty crazy because, you know, nobody is is dominating. We all have 20 plus losses. So I kind of it does go to show what John was saying, how closely matched teams are this year, and just you know if how this, it could swing either way. If this was Vegas, we wouldn't be paying our mortgages right now. <laughs> if this yeah. was Vegas, I probably wouldn't be showing. If I if this was Vegas, I'll be honest with you. When they when they called me, I would uh, essentially this would be us because we would have to take on other identities. So this would be the show. Proudly brought to you by Max, George, David, Wells, and Post Malone. I look like I'm in Beetlejuice. It's very pretty. <laughs> I like it. It's awesome. So what do you guys think about this? That's where we stand right now, through four we weeks. I think even Jordan, who's not good, has yeah. a chance. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to make up some ground. I think early on I tried picking some upsets that yeah. didn't work out. But... You, you might say Jordan is the Blake Bortles of picking. Yeah, really inconsistent. I'll have a good week once or twice. I'm going to legitimately kick you both out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there's a few weeks where I really kind of went for, like, bigger upsets and it yeah. didn't work out. So, so but I'm going to need to now because I need to make up ground. So. And just uh, 37-24, and just to let everybody know here, uh, pardon me here. 37, 24, and 2 is where Mike Sofka is at, my partner for the Fantasy Football Power Hour. So, Dan Tatora, a.k.a. Max George, 35, 26, and 2. David Wells, John Newman, 32, and 29, and 2. I thought this was baseball picks. I'm on the wrong program. Post Malone, a.k.a. Jordan Newman, 28, 33, and 2. And Mike Sofka, the Fantasy Football Power Hour, 37, 24, and 2. So Mike is in first, I am in second, John in third, Jordan in fourth as we head into week five. And we can now show our faces again. Because so we're I, 25% done. We're one-fourth, we're at the quarter pole. Yeah, pretty crazy. Just, so we're going to see what we get out of this one and, and, and what we accomplish out of the picks that we have this week 
to see just how just how smart we can be moving forward as you can once again you know check out our picks right here and we'll be adding them every single week like we always do green is right white is wrong so that's where we're at with everything so we've talked about that we've given you our picks we're ready for that and we appreciate that once again you are listening and watching fml friday morning live the late night talk show in the morning inside of wake up call with dan satora you brought some cards we are going to keep this part of the show it's become a portion of the segment so what do you got for us mr newman all right i got some new calvins who like we were talked about earlier he's playing pretty well He's a guy I believe in. I think he's one of the next uh, big receivers in the league. All right. Um, he might even be better than someone on his own team that's regarded as such in Julio Jones. Julio Jones. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. If, if it's amazing how when we announce that Jordan's in last place, he just leaves. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to stay on here, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> or maybe that was him not paying the mortgage. Yeah. Maybe that was the runaway. He's going to go throw up now because he's... <laughs> yeah, he, he just realized because he talks a lot of smack and he's like, yeah, yeah, Dan, come on, give us the picks, give us... And then there we are. Yeah. It's close. It's close. We love Jordan. We hope he comes back. We'll see if he does. Yeah. We can hold it down if he does. <laughs> we, you know, we built, the, we built this city... That he came in and, and worked on <laughs> after Jefferson Starship. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I mean, I, I think I think that Jordan needs to understand something, and and that is <coughs> that before he came into this, we were the ones that that built this. Yeah, we did. Voted. And, by the way, that was voted in case here's some voted the worst song of all time, yeah, right? Which I, I like the song. I'm not saying it's a great song. Yeah, but that's pretty hard. I'm surprised you know that because I know that. That it was voted worst rock song in the history. That is a horrible version. Hold on. You got the kids' bop version. Oh, that was a. It was like. Take away, post along. <laughs> So, I, I think it's really funny that you knew that it was voted the worst song because I, like, I knew that. I feel like nobody else knew I like that. Jefferson Starship. I don't hate the song as much as other people do. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's, you know, an all-time great either. It's somewhere in between, but, you know, uh, that's a little harsh, but apparently... <laughs> Wait a second on this. I think, I think, just for fun, just for giggles here for me, I think that, you know, as long as Jordan stays in last place in the picks, this is what we should play every time. I'm going to have to be him for Halloween. So. Yes. I think you're him I all think. the time. I think for Halloween you should be Jordan Newman. Yeah. You gotta get some face tats. <laughs> I also, because cause the I can hear through the walls in the bathroom. I, I view my coming on to the show as more of a, it's like you guys were the Jaguars with Bortles and I was the quarterback you needed to get over the hump and win the Super Bowl. I see it differently. See, but we got ourselves to face the Patriots and lose by four and lose, in yeah. the AFC Championship you game. Needed, you needed the guy. Like, you needed that difference maker, and I, that's what I see myself as on the show. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm your guy's Le'Veon Bell. You know what I mean? Hold on. I don't know what this one is. FML brought to you by Post Malone. <laughs> you gotta what? Pay royalties. I'm not paying any royalties. This is out of the goodness of my heart. You're gonna get a, a real bill from the real post. Yeah. I hope not. But I, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I think that they'll appreciate it. I know Max George does. You think David Wells appreciates it? I think he signed two less autographs. I think he appreciates. There you go. That. And you kept, and yeah, you kept his numbers up, right? And I made two kids happy. And, and I mean, in, in respect to Max George, my buddy told me that he thought I looked like him as the wanted was disbanding. So he went out of the limelight. His band broke up. So I'm keeping him 
ever in the spotlight, what's which he, is a good thing. What's he doing now? He's he's, he's hosting Wake Up Call yeah. with Dan Tortora. Yeah, here he is. He's taking on a new moniker, and just like your license, just like your license that you showed the kids, I he is pretending to be somebody he's yeah. not. It's all good. So. Let's show the cards. I know we've gone wildly <laughs> off track, but I needed to. I needed right. an excuse to play some post So this is a guy I've been acquiring some stuff of. Uh, he's starting to go up now price-wise, so he's, he's getting a little trickier to, to purchase stuff of. But I got in at a good time where I was able to acquire some stuff. So the first one is uh, from the Donruss Elite. This is the turn of a century. It's a Ridley Auto to yeah. 99. Uh, pretty shiny card. Pretty nice card. I'm trying to see if you guys know this song. I don't know this song. Oh yeah, I think I do. You know this song, don't you? No? When's the beat drop? That is the wanted. I found it. But this is this makes even more sense that Max, George, and I are the same person. So they're not together no more? No, the, the band The Wanted disbanded. So they're not wanted. They are unwanted. But here's the thing. Right, so brother. Max Jar Max George. Jarge. Jarge. Max Jarge. He started yeah, So Max George. Th this shows that Max George and I are even more the same person. I'm Hispanic. My family is from Spain. They listen in Spain. And one of the singles that Max George came out with by himself is Barcelona, which I've never mm -hmm. heard. My Sharona. And Max George wants to thank you because that's the first time since last year that song's <laughs> been played over the airwaves. So I'm trying to think of a wanted song that you guys would know. Good luck. <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. Yeah, that ain't it either. It's crazy. I thought that they had Has he done more any mainstream commercial songs. songs. Oh, they they did. They did a song called "Walks Like Rihanna." Is it like "Walk Like Egyptian"? So, the most famous. Uh, so essentially, artist, I am making the wanted more famous by playing it on the show today. We are on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora inside of FML Friday Morning Live. We have now played three songs that were never played before. Yeah. <laughs> Their funny. world debut here on FML. <laughs> it's like we like, need Carson Daly to yeah. be on. Well, that was what somebody told me. I look like I don't look anything like Carson Daly, and I'm not a big fan. No. I don't. I don't like Carson Daly. Okay. Well, I, I shouldn't say I don't like Carson Daly. I just don't think I look like Carson Daly, and I'm not a big fan. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but Calvin Ridley, I got to say something. Some people get cards, not because it's their favorite player, but because they have really cool patches, or it's a full patch, or a tricolored patch, or if they have what I would call a very sexy signature. Look at that signature. Yeah, it's kind of a big C. -R it's a big C R, but how cool is that? It kind of looks like a butt as well. <laughs> uh, my signature is really nice. Look at how nice that signature is. I like that a lot. Oh, I gotta give you my jersey. Yeah, you do have to give me your I have jersey. A, I have. You got pick. I got like four. Okay, because we're putting it up in the studio. We're gonna put it somewhere here so that Post Malone can always be with us. Yeah. Kelvin Ridley, and Jordan Newman. So this is a very nice one. This is a numbered card. It is number two ninety nine in the world. It's number thirty nine of ninety nine. Can you see it? Let's get it close. Thirty nine of ninety nine. It is a refractor. It is a on. It's an on sticker on card, yeah. yep. and his cards are are uh, they're still. I mean, you know, you can you they're, can kind of go out and going get them right up now. now. Where now it's getting harder for me to to acquire them at, at a level <laughs> yeah. that I can do something with. Why is Nick Chubbs going up so much? I think he had, yeah, he had a he good had some game. Runs, yeah. yeah, I think people know he's. Well, probably he had there he had a hundred over a hundred yards on two runs in his last game against Oakland. People have Chubbs for Chubb. It's like tears for fears. Remember them. There is. That was my sister's favorite band. Tears for Fears. Yeah, do you remember them? You, I do remember might, Tears for Fears. I know yeah. Tears for Fears. Everybody wants to rule the world. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was before your time. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that. 
So, so that's like another Ridley. This is uh, out of the Panini. This is one of those gold knights, the numbered cards. It has the gold Panini up there. Yeah. And there's only 20 of these. This is number uh, 11. I have a, a Saquon like that as well. I think these are kind of nice. They're one of the first rookies that yeah. have them in their actual NFL uniforms as well. Well, the cool thing about this is when I used to collect cards uh, in the past, I mean, I, I've always have, but in the past, when they would say something above it, it kind of meant the card was like cheap. It was like yeah. nothing. Now they've taken what would be not, you know, meaningful and made it meaningful by writing Panini on the top of some of these cards, coloring it. This is gold plated and it's number to 20 in the world. So you can see right there, 11 of 20. It's in gold. Also, also in gold is Panini, the rookie card. And Calvin Ridley, who looks like he's about to juke out the camera, like, oh. So you see that right there, Calvin Ridley on the back. And I think this is kind of cool, a little note. None of Ridley's touchdowns went to waste at Alabama, with the Crimson Tide winning all 18 games in his three seasons when he reached the end zone at least once. The total includes his lone career rushing touchdown at Ole Miss in 2016 and games with two touchdown grabs versus Michigan State in 2015 and Kentucky in 2016. So all 18 games that he had a touchdown, they had a victory at Alabama. And you can get Kelvin Ridley by going to ecwid.com backslash store backslash Newman Sports Cards or by on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram searching Newman Sports Cards. What make, else you got? We gotta make a show. So, card. Uh, I'll gotta bring make a what? A show card. Yeah, well, from top. Like we'll a, do a custom. Design them. Yeah. The show card? Yeah. We'll do, I'll do something. We'll yeah. do something. Uh, this, this is, Are you going to make one for me? No. Well, you'll be on it. You'll one. be on it. We'll all be on it. Oh, okay. Um, You're not going to make one, just me? I mean, if you want to. That'll say Blake Bortles fan club because I know how you are. Well, it'll just be you. It's a Blake. <laughs> and Blake Bortles, mind if you want yeah. to sneak her in on the phone. You're making this way too easy for me right now. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, last football card I brought, and then I brought a few baseball. We're still in baseball season. Yeah. This a uh, a pretty sharp card. This is actually from 2007. I actually kind of forgot I had this. I broke it out of a, a box that I kind of keep personal stuff in yeah but this is a 2007 one of the first years that national treasures uh came along and this was Which actually a great product yeah this was national treasures before panini bought out playoff so this is actually playoff playoff national, <laughs> national treasures you kidding me yeah. <laughs> it's a one time jim mora actually he was i think he was trying to impersonate mickey because yeah. my mickey is oh Bye. Who's my pal? <laughs> and then his is playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? Just, playoffs? I'm We're just, just trying to win a game. So, and he did that game. Like, it was very <laughs> scary at the end of it all. And that's sad that that's what he's really going to be known Why? for. Why? But the thing is, we haven't had coaches in a long time that gave us the Jim Mora, Herm Edwards, like, you play to win the game. And then, bless his heart, and having Denny Green, where he was like, yeah. he's like, we are who, we, they are who we thought they were. And we let him off the hook. And he yeah. walked away. And they slammed his broke to something on the podium. That was. And then yeah. the Jim Beheim microphone incident when he was like <laughs> fighting with the microphone that was giving him feedback, and he tried to break it and pull it up, and then just left. I thought it almost happened during one of the press conferences I I was at. The microphone he it was giving him a little bit of stuff, and he looked at it, and he went to kinda, and then he didn't, and then he he literally said, and I don't know if everybody heard him, but I always stand right to his left. So if you're looking at the press conference, it's on the right, but I'm right to his left. And he looked down at the mic and he goes, no, he goes, I'm not going to do that again. Like he, he was fighting with it and he kind of looked down at it and he goes, not going to do that again. Because he had, he had a little battle with that microphone. Yeah. What did you call it? Bad, I think battle, I think, what was his name? Oh, Tyus yeah. Battle. Yeah. He had a Tyus Battle with the mic. Yeah, he had a Battle Royale. Yeah. So this is from 2007. Okay. Uh, from when before Panini took over, it's net one of the first incarnations of, of National Treasures, and it's a Roethlisberger. And if you look at the patch, you can tell this is from his name. This is from the nameplate. Ben Roethlisberger, 23 of 25 in the world, and you can see the 23 of 25 right there. Look at it, certificate of authenticity, and you can see. Playoff right there in the middle before Panini bought the world and the rights to every NFL thing in it. This was by playoff. Yeah, and I looked some of these up. I'm surprised to find out how valuable some of these 
some of these are just because now they're... It's really they're, cool. This looks like a, a, an upside down and backwards too. Yeah. But we see Ben Roethlisberger. It's in gold. And then you see that jersey patch is really... I just like that it's gold. Yeah. And I love I love these cases. I feel like it makes right. me want to want the card more when it's in the thicker case with the little gold screw that's there. Magnet. That's it. Right. Potatoes, potatoes, Post Malone, Jordan Newman. I don't know the difference. So, Ben Roethlisberger. It's a nice card. It is a really nice card. Great player. So, I brought a few <laughs> baseball cards. Uh, we're still in baseball season. Jordan says that because we consider Ben to be elite and... This gentleman does not. I don't know uh, how you don't think he's a league. I, watched, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I, I watched this week's game. At Dude, this week, yeah. What is he, 38? To me, elite guys don't have that bad a game. Dude, you're ridiculous, man. That's not, It's not even an argument. That's almost worse than arguing that Blake Bortles is above average. When I agree with you, you have to just not attack me. <laughs> but you know Ben Roethlisberger is clearly... Blake Bortles is above average. Ben yeah. Roethlisberger is elite. Roethlisberger is clearly an elite quarterback. He's he, been elite. Almost he is an all elite of his quarterback. Career. I'm going to give him that. He is elite. Clearly, he's a Hall of Famer. You don't make the Hall of Famer. Uh, he is not. a Hall of Famer. How are you a Hall of Famer? You know who else is a Hall of Famer? You, Terrell Davis. Because you can be yeah. a very good player. And Dude, make he's the Hall better of than very good. He's, he's much better than very good. He's very very good. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> very very good, not great. He's consistently that, better. That's true. I he's been a consistent that. top five quarterback in the league for the last ten years, easily. Easily from 2004 to 2014, he's a top five. He has yeah. good pocket presence, I'll give him that much. Yeah. What else do we have here? We have baseball. We're, now. we're finishing that argument after you get through. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Jacob DeGrom is, is that was literally like when you fight with your significant other. Uh, Jordan's like, When you get no, Jordan's like, mm hmm, what okay, when you get home. We're going to finish the argument, okay? And I'm going to remember exactly where we were at. Love you, honey. Have a great day at work. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. That's right. It's going to happen. We are gonna. We had this argument before, but we can have it again. Yeah. Uh, so Jacob DeGrom is, is dominating kind of in the headlines for the Mets in, in the National League as, as the Cy Young yeah. uh, most likely winner. Okay. If he um, doesn't win, they... And they have another guy on their team that's a pretty good pitcher, having actually a pretty good year. He's Boris through. Yeltsin? You, God bless you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's Noah Syndergaard. He's actually thirteen and four. I think like his Peter Skarsgård. He is a great actor. Liam Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Play word association. Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Thor. So, Wait. Yeah. So. Uh, I've been buying a lot of Noah, Noah Syndergaard stuff because the Grom stuff has gone through the roof. Yeah. And his stuff's kind of come down on a good year, and that's when you want to buy a guy like this is, yep. is on the downswing. Buy players when, before that's people it. know that they're great. He's young, too. As he's they're coming up, buy them before people are sold on them. This is the thing, and I will say this because this did happen. Blake Bortles cards his, like, jersey patch for, like, three bucks. They go to the, the, as they go farther and farther in the playoffs. The team got good at the end of the season. That three dollar card was like fifty bucks. His autograph that maybe was thirteen bucks was one hundred and fifty nine well, bucks. Stuff when he first was drafted was crazy money because he was supposed to be good, and then he turned out to be Blake Bortles. <laughs> A moment of silence for a mediocre quarterback. Hi, honey. I'm gonna be late. <laughs> no, Jordan's in the back seat trunk. Backseat. Yeah, we'll this is an Eminem video. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. He's okay. We we love Jordan. No, but the reality of it all is when play when teams get farther and players are on those teams and they're performing well, you see their cards drastically increase. Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes cards now. I mean, you try and look for a card now, a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, four ninety nine. That's I mean, Nick Chubb, for goodness sakes, he's played four games and his cards are skyrocketing. We're looking at guys like Cortland Sutton, where they're kind of like at the equator. Bradley Chubb is at the equator. But Lamar Jackson, who's not even out there, you can't find an autograph. Most of his are 159 199 Some are 1000 and he hasn't even been out there to play at all in the regular season as a starter or as the guy that they're trusting to win games. So it's just funny, but in his case, Lamar didn't sign a lot. And initially, we talked about it, he didn't sign any cards for like three or four months. So by the time an autograph finally came out, you could get that card and charge 159 for it because it was the only one out there. He tried to. He just missed the card when he was signing it. That was good. 
I'm not gonna fault you for that. Funny. Was pretty good. It's funny. Or his autograph went off or off the card. Or so you got Lamar Jack. Or he ended up buying the Dak Prescott autograph maker, and he just misrepresented it. He just he didn't put he in did the right the coordinates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all good. Or maybe all the cards said Dak Prescott. Yeah, they used it on the wrong one. <laughs> they both might play about the same. You know, I don't know. At least we'll he can see. run. So this first one is out of the high tech. It's the emerald green number. This to is 75. very thin. Yep. This is a transparent, somewhat transparent card. Yeah, acetate. I've never seen anything it's like this. Acetate. acetate. And it's fun because you get to say acetate on the air. Agitate? Acetate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the acetate here. No, the cool thing about this is you don't really see a lot of autographs that look like they're almost floating on a placemat. Yeah. And that's what the acetate does for this one. As you can see here. You can look at it, and the autograph almost looks like it's above the card, but yeah, it's on nice it. The nice thing about these, these are, that's on card auto. So. Yeah, this is an on card acetate Noah Syndergaard. Pretty cool looking. If only the Mets could win games. If only. 46 out of 75 in the world. It's sad because every year the Mets give their fans hope, and then they don't win. Yep. Kind of like the Diamondbacks, thank you. you got to get rid of the Will Ponds. Yeah. So I'll put this right out on the air right here. I have. You're 50, putting out on the air? Yeah, I'm okay. going to do that. Uh, $50 <laughs> to anyone who gets rid of the Will Ponds. $50. That, that's it. We'll probably pony up some more, maybe some Chick-fil-A. $50 and, and, a Chick strand, and a strand of Jordan's hair. And Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And Chick-fil-A. If they get my hair, the money's off the table. That's true. You have to pick one or the other. We should do a card with your hair in it. Can we get can we get like patch cards of ourselves? Uh, there's probably some place that does that. it. I'll yeah. have to research it. I also probably think that Charles Manson made a few. That's weird. I haven't seen them. <laughs> Charles Manson or who would be another one that would make a card like that of someone's hair? Uh, the guy that Norman Bates. That or uh, the Texas, Animal Lecter. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Guy, oh, yeah. He's, he's a name. wonderful one. Oh, the other. Jeffrey Edward Dahmer. Gain. Jeffrey Edward, Dahmer, Mike Myers. Uh, look up Edward Gain. G-E-I-N. Not now, but later on. Yeah, I don't want to feel like back to cards. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another. Look up this serial killer. Yeah. We're going to do our top ten. No, we're not going to do that. We went into serial killer. When I was a kid, I honestly thought, I, I said to my parents, like, what? What's the deal with serial killers? Like, why do people care so much? And I just, I would picture people with giant knives stabbing, like, Cheerios boxes. When I was a kid, I thought a serial killer was somebody who opened up boxes of cereal. And I have a stepbrother. When we were younger, he would, like, literally eat a whole box of cereal at one sitting. You call like him a both. serial killer? Yeah. yeah. I, I really didn't focus on serial killers in my youth. Yeah, I don't know. I did. So... That may that might be a little messed up. But <laughs> there's worse things in life. There so. is. Go ahead, continue. Who is it? I'm just getting ready for stuff. All right. So here's another Syndergaard. This one's really cool. And Jordan points out that he believes this is from the '86 throwback. Yeah. This is from Inception. It's numbered to uh, 50, and it's got the '80s. I don't understand much of the English. Did he say Tony Romo? Tony Tony Homo. He said Tony Homo. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it sounded like. He did. Yeah. I hate. I hear. I hate to go to Psycho. I'm on my bed like Michael. Can't really trust nobody. With all the Jewish something that I can't. Oh, he said Jewish? My roof looks like a no-show got damaged by the bolo. Is that what he says? I have no idea. I always think it's the police. I don't think he knows. It's, it's the bolo. been a while since I I don't think he knows. I think yeah. he can change the lyrics and no one even cares. Yeah. You know, holo, rolo. I'll just have to ask Mofo. Him. Yeah. It's, it's like Jordan. He can change his points of view and nobody recognizes I him. Have, I've, stood, <laughs> I've stood pretty strong on Bortles. Yeah, you have. You're a hater. It's okay. And AAC and... And how it's big it's hate. Is, but. It's hate. That's all it is. All right, what do we got so here? This is the Inception from the throwback, numbered out of fifty. So this is really Inception. Check. So we don't know if this card is actually real or if it's fake, and we're showing you a hologram. And check out the the patch on this thing. Yeah, it's from the racing stripes on the. Uh, you can even throwback. see like the indentation on the white part here. Yeah, 
It's so crazy because it looks like red, white, and blue, but it's actually orange. Look at that. And that, you know, well, it's now it funny. Looks when I first got the card, I didn't notice it until I saw it up close. There's actually a pinstripe in it. Noah Syndergaard. And we have, yeah, we have the, so if you look really, really closely, let me get it to you. There you go. You can see the pinstripe on the white, then the orange and the blue. Noah Syndergaard, and there is his beautiful autograph. And this is 7 of 50 on the planet. Look at it. See it. Love it. Check out the back. This is available to you as well, Mr. Syndergaard, by checking out Newman Sports Cards on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And then the last one, I don't think, I'm not sure if I brought it. If I did, I brought it back again. It's worthy of a second showing anyway. Okay. This is from the Archive Signature Series. It's a it's a high-end product. You get one card per pack. Every card's encased in the slab with the top sticker on the top that seals it. Yeah. And this one is a, a Harp, Bryce Harper autograph. Probably one of the last times you might be in a... Uh, in a uh, Nationals uniform, yeah, and it's the uh, auto, and it's a one of one, meaning there's only one of them. And this auto actually looks fake. It looks like a facsimile because uh, look mm -hmm. at how it's on there. Right. That's so cool. That, that this almost looks like it wasn't a card auto. It looks like someone got the card and had somebody well, what sign these it. These are there. what Tops does. With this these, is pretty awesome. These are actually previously released cards. Yeah. They buy them back. They have them signed. They put their own stamp on them and then reissue them. Yeah, this essentially so, looks like I went to a trade show and I had them sign yeah, it. Yeah, this is an actual 2014 Bowman Gold card. And you can see on there that it says the Topps Archive right there, certified autograph. You can see also on here that it is numbered the one of one. Let me make sure you can see that. Oh, there it is right there over his shoulder. It says one of one. And then you can see the Bowman, Bryce Harper. And it says Platinum Report on the back. You can check that out. So this was a base card that yep. they turned gold and bought it back and had them sign it. That yep. signature looks fancy as all get out. Yeah, Bryce Harper, if you look at his early signatures, they've changed as, as he's gotten older. Like there's there's different Bryce Harper signatures. You can actually tell Those are pretty when cool. he signed it by what they look like, what, what age period. And then, and then our one thing that is not for sale is is this little puppy. She likes to join Friday Morning Live on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. Stare down Newman. Win it. Win it. Win it. She won it. So this is Lily. This is my sidekick for all my shows. And she's here with us right now. Up on the shoulder she goes. So Lily is here in the studios for Friday morning live. I don't even recognize this dog. It's like a whole new dog. I know she got a haircut. So it's like that so it's like that song. Hi, baby. It's a whole new dog. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I did I did this with her when she was little and she well, likes this. Simple yeah. cam? When you do the na sequenya mamani <laughs> She's very photogenic. That just made this video legitimately go platinum. We we made this video platinum. go post Malone platinum right now. So we're happy to be here with you once again. We have changed the name to FML Friday Morning Live, and it is here with you the late your late night talk show in the morning inside a wake up call with Dan Satora with John Newman, Jordan Newman, and myself, Dan Satora. Any final thoughts besides your hatred for Blake Bortles? Any final thoughts? I want to say something about Syracuse. I was thinking about this earlier today. By the way, great show. Yeah, Our post, -game post game show that John and I did. Awesome response from all of you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we hope that we can get Jordan out for one of these post game ones too soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, soon you'll need me. So. Well, now that we've built it up, it's typically his time to come in. <laughs> so I was just thinking, had they held on and won that game? You think about it, they've been five and zero, oh, right? Yeah. They would have been. What do you figure? Ranked maybe fifteenth, sixteenth. I think honestly that they have an argument to be ranked after losing the game. Yeah, I agree with you too. Well, let's say they won it, they would have been maybe fifteenth or sixteenth in that poll. You could argue that the Clemson's going to be the most difficult test on the rest of their schedule. Oh, uh, they have Notre Dame though. Notre Dame's going to. But tough. I think Clemson's better than Notre Dame. Um, I think it's still something you think. They had a legitimate, to me, they had a legitimate chance 
to potentially run the table if they won that Clemson game. Can you imagine had they gone undefeated? What where they'd be ranked and they'd be in the playoff talk. I'd have to disagree. Well, this team, you know, uh, a bunch of the guys, Eric Dungey and company, did believe at the beginning of the season and spoke to Rob Drummond about it. They said, we believe we could go undefeated. They've had a lot of faith in themselves, and now it's about showing. They believe that they could do it. They know they let one slip away, and what Eric Dungey said, that Dino Baber said, and Scoop Bradshaw continued it in my conversation with him is they made a statement that you and I have have made, John, and, and I'm sure Jordan will agree with this, that they said nobody can say it better than Dino. He said one comment, don't let Clemson beat you twice. Yep. Which means let it go, let it move forward. Syracuse beat Clemson last year, went 0-5 the rest of the season. Now they lost to Clemson, and they have to show their ability to bounce back. We look at the schedule right here, and we see their four wins, and then their loss 27-23. Let's look at the rest of the schedule, though, because I, I did this with Marvin Graves. And he doesn't have them losing another game. He's got them going 11-1. and one. I've argued that they can get to nine wins. Jordan, John and I have done this. I'm going to ask you to do this. All right. So, I remember, what do we both say the same, right? We said right around nine and three, right? Yeah. So, what do you think, Jordan? So, I, I, I got them beating Pittsburgh. I think that should be a win. That's five UN, and one. UNC, they should win. Um, NC State isn't as great as normal, but it, that can be a tough game. But I think they win that game. Wake Forest, they should win. So you have five, six, seven, eight, and one. Yep. Uh, they should we beat Louisville, and then Notre Dame. I I don't think they beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame is good, especially with uh, what's his name, the quarterback change with Wimbush out. Their passing game is completely opened up, and then Boston College, even though they lost, I think still a real good team, which I think that's going to be tough. Yeah. I think they lose that game as well. So you have them at nine and three. Yeah, I have them at nine and three. John has them at nine and three. We all we all pick different losses. Yeah, we all we all essentially mm. pick different losses. I, the games that I circle as kind of the uh, the danger zone games. I think this Pittsburgh game is a danger zone yeah. game for them. I think that for some reason, and I said going into the season that Louisville was going to have a down year, which meant five or six wins for them. I, I think that Louisville is a, a it's kind of a nerve wracking game for me. It's a Friday night game. And the Notre Dame game. So I think somewhere within the region... NC State, I think, will be a tough one as well. Yeah, but I, Notre, I think somewhere in the region of Notre yeah. Dame, Notre Pittsburgh, Dame, Louisville, those type loss. games. Notre Dame's really good, especially with the quarterback change with Ian Buck. He Ian can Buck, throw yeah. the ball where they didn't have the ability yeah, to Yeah, he throw can throw it and he can run it. He yeah. had four touchdowns, no picks against Stanford. Yeah, so I think... And Stanford I, beat Oregon, and Oregon's still ranked, and Stanford got spanked by Notre Dame, so figure that one out. Yeah, so I, I think Notre Dame's a real contender, which they usually are ranked high, never live up to it. Yeah. But I think with, with the quarterback change, they have a... Their problem was always they can't really pass the ball. Wimbush is so inconsistent downfield. I yeah. think the change with Buck, I think they're a legit um, threat now in the college football playoff. And so what we essentially wanted to show you here is this is, you know, we have acronyms on Wake Up Call, DT.com. QS stands for Constant Updates and Special Exclusives. And so right here uh, you can see all the articles, the QS clippings are what they're called. Every article that I write on Syracuse football, you'll find here Syracuse 4-0 for the first time since 91. If you click on any of these, it will essentially bring you out of that and to the to the article itself. It's probably brought to you by Honda City of Liverpool, and you can check this out. Finishes under Dino Babers, head-to-head -head under Dino Babers, the 2018 schedule with the game stories, and outside of that, Syracuse recruiting. This is technically going to be Dino Baber's fourth recruiting class, which will make his first full team as you as we go all the way down this thing. In 2016, when he came in, he kept four of the players that Scott Schaefer had out of 22. He kept Scoop Bradshaw at corner. He kept Rex Culpepper at quarterback. They both played together at HB Plant in Tampa, and I had the chance to go down and see them. He also kept Mo Neal at running back, and he kept offensive lineman Sam Heckel. And then in his second class, it was all his. He got Tommy DeVito as the torchbearer. Tommy DeVito, Sherrod Johnson, seed some time. Tyrell Richards, Nikeem Johnson's made some big plays this year. We've also seen the likes of, going down this list here, Aaron Hackett 
made that big time play on fourth down that was called off due to the ineligible receiver downfield. Kingsley Jonathan's made some plays on the defensive line. And of course, Ravion Pierce has done some good things at tight end. Chris Elmore has been the big time fullback that they need on this team as well. And then the 2018 class, Gabe Haran in his first game, first play, first catch, got his first touchdown against UConn, the only local scholarship on the team out of Charles W. Baker, Baker in Baldwinsville. Trill Williams already has a score, has an interception, has done some good things. We've also seen some positive play out of Taj Harris on the team, who got a touchdown on his first catch of the game, which was a big-time play earlier this season. We've also seen the likes of Andre Sisko. Yeah, the guy I really like. Who, yeah, he went to IMG Academy from Bradenton, Florida. He was also in D.C. before that. And uh, outside of that, we've seen Jarvion Howard, who I think is going to be a big-time power back for Syracuse to get them back to. I think Jarvion Howard has the opportunity of getting Syracuse back to the running backs that we're used to seeing, the power backs that are going to break through the hole. I think once you lose a Dungy, you're going to need more of a back than they do now with Dungy. Right. You know, I think they use that pass. Well, and I think Tommy's going to run when he has to. I think he's going to be more more of a pocket passer. Yep, and if you're going to be a pocket passer, you're going to need a running back behind you. And as we look at the 2019 class so far, there's been 12 commits dating all the way back to the torchbearer Courtney Jackson, who's been on Wake Up Call, and he said yes back on April 27th of this year, all the way to August 3rd with Nazir Burnett who said yes to Syracuse, and as well as Ishmael Goulborn, Garrett Williams, Dorian Hewitt, Matthew Bergeron. I think it's interesting, two guys coming from Canada, from Quebec, from the same team. Then you have Luke Benson, Adrian Cole, Cornelius Nunn, Jeff Canton, Anthony Redd, and Joe Rondi also joining the fray, and Jeff Canton, the other guy from Quebec City. What do you think about, I mean, they have Patrick Davis, and they've been taking some of these guys from Canada, but... Two guys from the same team, same place, coming into Syracuse in 2019. What do you think about Syracuse using Canada as a potential breeding ground for their future? It's not the first time they've done it uh, before. They do it in basketball. Yeah. I mean, it's still it's still football. If they can play and make plays and be playmakers, what difference, you know, it ain't that far from us, so. Absolutely, and I tell everybody here that every episode of Wake Up Call is on demand on the RSS feed, Podbean Podcast, TuneIn Radio, and iTunes Podcast, MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT will give you what you need as well for the live feed, our videos, and you'll also see the companies that help make it possible. We want to thank each and every single one of them, and then on the What's Happening part, you'll see the shows here that we load up and quick links to Syracuse football, men's basketball, fantasy football, Jaguars coverage, the CNY Pop Festival Year 2, and the On Demand Radio Archive, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube are all here. We also have our Instagram that you can check out. So, plenty of ways to get involved, and I'm very excited that we are now FML. Instead of F My Life, it is now Friday Morning Live. It's a positive building off of a negative, and it is your late night talk show in the morning. We'll have cards. We will have, obviously, joking around. We'll have doppelgangers. We'll have impersonations, comedy, and so much more. And, of Jordan, course, the sports Jordan's talk. got to work on his Post Malone impression. Yeah, you do. That I don't know. And I hate to go to psycho. You got to get it. It's not that bad. You could do it. I, I fully expect you to be ready by the next time we talk. <laughs> I fully expect you. Can you do any impressions? No, I'm not. I'm not a None. person guy. No, I've got work on being myself. <laughs> you can do Scooby. Yeah. No, please don't. <laughs> right, Raggy? I don't really care what Warden says. All right, well, you guys get to choose the one that I get to I end. wrote for Rome. So <laughs> what do I get to end the show with? You can pick. Can I have my final word? Yes, what's your final word? Um, ben you do have to pick what impersonation I'm going to do, though. All right. What's your final <clears throat> word? Uh, ben Roethlisberger. Clearly an elite quarterback over the span of his career. Obviously, he's getting older. See, he didn't forget that you had to argue when we finished. But he's still clearly an elite quarterback. When you're he, considered, There's not many. There's only like five or six right now in the NFL. But when you're considered a top five quarterback for a span of almost ten years, I, I think you should be considered yeah. elite. So I, He's in there. 
I, I think it's unfair to call him very good when you won two Super Bowls. I said Bowls. very, very good. There's two still, very. So when you win two Super Bowls <laughs> and you put up the numbers he did with numerous receivers, Brown doesn't make him who he is because he's done it with guys before Brown was there. He did it before Wallace was there. He did it with uh, San Antonio Plaxico Holmes. Burris. Yeah, Plexo Burris. He, he did it with Hines all these Ward, guys. San Antonio Holmes. And how about this? When Plexico left the Steelers, he was a nobody. When San Antonio yeah, left the Steelers, he was a nobody. Yeah. When Martavis Mike, Bryant left, he was a nobody. Well, Mike, Mike Wallace, Wallace has traveled around. Yeah, he, he did some good things in Baltimore, he's, but he's not he's there anymore. He's getting signed just because he's fast. He's not. He's but not think about that. Wise. Antonio Brown said, "Trade me. Let me show yeah. you what I can do." But look at all of the num- not just yeah. former receivers, former number one options and number two options for Ben Roethlisberger have left the Steelers and never even been a lick close to what they used to be. Even when Mike Wallace is yeah. catching touchdowns in Baltimore, none of those and guys what they used to be. Emmanuel Sanders had a couple good years in Denver, yeah. but nothing He's still to the same two. level. Yeah. And, I mean, you see the guys that, that are these big-name receivers leave, and they just don't. They're not the same guy. And, and Mike has his picks for us. The Titans, the Bengals, the Ravens, the Packers, the Jaguars, the Broncos, the Steelers, the Panthers – the Chargers, the Eagles, the Niners, the Rams, the Texans, and the Saints. So he's the only one of us picking the Jaguars this week. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. What impression am I ending the show with? Um, Ben Roethlisberger. There's nothing. I, oh, oh, wait. I do have a Ben Roethlisberger. Hold on. Um, I, I, I wanted to take this time because I, I have something to say. I am... Very sorry for what you think I did. No further questions. Thank you. That's my Ben Roethlisberger. Listen, he's overcame <laughs> adversity from from. He Mark. over he overcame two rape allegations. It's not it's not adversity. The, the key word the key <laughs> word in that the key word though is allegations. Anyone can be accused of anything. It's just, the first time. You're accusing him of being an elite quarterback. He's clearly an elite quarterback. It shouldn't even be an argument. I don't know in what universe he's not elite. You look at the last... The from, one I live in. From 2004 to 2014, he's top five quarterback. For 10 years, he's a top five quarterback that's elite. I'm not arguing he is right now. I don't think he is right now. He's old. He's not the same guy. But I, th- I think over his career, he's made receivers. I have no idea what he's going to say. Can I... Wait, how do I do that? Yeah, go up. Yeah. I don't really... <laughs> I, it shouldn't even be an argument. I have the official note yeah. that, that that he had to read off of. He's clearly a... Those are some big words. I am really sorry. He's clearly an elite quarterback. I don't even think it's debatable. It shouldn't... It's he's not He's on the fringe. He's can we, not. Can, how can is we, can we do? How about we do this? Can we do this? Let's write down the five elite quarterbacks in the NFL. Right now? Right now. In this moment. Right now. We're going to write it right down. Now. Okay. So not over... A Do you need a pen? Of, so not, right over, now. not over the span of their career. Just right, right now. now? Right now we're doing it. Okay. Play some Jeopardy music. I'm going to play the Jeopardy music. Let me get it right. I hope I spell it right. We're going to play the Jeopardy music while we do this. These are the five current elite quarterbacks. I feel like I'm missing someone. Yeah, put on, put on the screen all the teams. Yeah, just put the teams up. I'm missing someone. Yeah, I don't want to miss anybody. I have an idea about someone, but... And Bortles, I got a dark. Bortles is B O R T L E T T A T L E S. I got one that's gonna surprise you. We're doing five, and you don't have to put them in order. Uh, I put mine in. Kinda. I don't know if I do. Are you ready? Hang on, I'm not done. How are you not done? Dude? Oh my god. I like the guy, but he's. Thank you. 
Blake Bortles or Blaine Gabbert can't be on the list. Blaine Gabbert would never be on the list. What is? <laughs> all right. So I will. I will have. All right. Let me make sure I got what I need here. Because I had. I had to think since I was faci- yeah, facilitating. Yeah. My last all one. This. I had to think, but I'm. I'm pretty solid on them. Okay. Go ahead. All right. One. Okay. <laughs> These are. No. I'm gonna hit. You're gonna describe them. Uh. One is Rogers, Mahomes, Brady, Breeze, and Goff. Uh. Rogers is clearly the most talented. I think quarterback in all NFL. I. He's not. He's working with much less than I think every other guy in that list. Mahomes is, it's hard to put him up there because it's early, but... Because it's only been four games. Yeah, but 14 touchdowns, no picks with the amount of yards he's throwing is kind of nuts. Brady is Brady. Uh, Breeze is doing what he's doing every year. And then Goff, I think... So these are like your here and now, here and now. Yeah. Because I would imagine that your Pat Mahomes and your Jared Goff were based off mm-hmm. of this year. Goff was tough. I almost, Somewhat last year, maybe. Yeah, I was thinking of Russell Wilson, but I think he struggled in the numbers Goff's putting up this year without many mistakes. Yeah. I think uh, if he's clearly top five. Okay. All right, John. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I listen, I like the guy, but I don't think he's top five right now. This is John's list. I love. I love how. I love the how. Pen died. I'm well, trying to write out breezy. It's it. really cool. It's Rogers. Th- this is how. This is how you wrote them based on loudness. Okay. This is how you wrote them. Rogers, Luck, Brady, Mahomes, Breeze. <laughs> so you breeze wrote, is probably you wrote, number four or five. Look at that. Breeze. Luck. Luck. Or it also looks like Oreos if you look at it quick. But we have Rogers, Brady. I see my (laughs) Wegman shopping list. So why did you pick these five? Uh, Well, it went on when when the keyword was current. So I went with this year. Yeah. You know, Rogers is is a no-brainer. We got to do like Brady. Brady's a no-brainer. You know, my last Breeze is a no-brainer. And then I I thought, you know, he had to pick five. I think Mahomes is just the fact that he's not making any mistakes makes him elite. And then, fourteen you know, touchdowns. I, like, no picks. I probably like him a little bit more than other guys. I think when he plays and he's not hurt, uh, Andrew Luck is I, in there. I that, agree, that Luck's air. good, but I don't think he's top five right now. I think he can be by the end of the season, but he's not playing like a top five quarterback right now. No, I have him right outside. Well, of the look top what 10. he does with the crappy weapons he has. Dude, he has. They're not as bad as you make them. This is my list: Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger. And Pat Mahomes. Now, the fifth one was a hard one for me. Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, not difficult for me at all. But Pat Mahomes was, he beat out Russell Wilson because it's so weird to me. Russell Wilson somehow, someway led the entire NFL last year with 34 touchdown passes, followed by Carson Wentz, who got hurt with 33. So it wasn't Tom Brady, it wasn't Rodgers who got hurt, it wasn't Brees, it wasn't Roethlisberger, so it shocks me, and the reason why it shocks me is that the numbers at the end of the year for Russell Wilson always look, I mean, to me, that number looks so much better than what he does. Because game by game, it's like one touchdown, one interception. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. One touchdown, no interceptions. Two touchdowns, one interception. It, 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 he never wows me from game to yeah. game. It's just at the end of the season. But, you know, this is wow. And so, you know, Russell Wilson doesn't wow me, but Pat Mahomes does. So Mahomes, you're gonna make this list, but you got to keep it up, brother. But Brady, Breeze, Rogers, Roethlisberger. I mean, that's that's career. We really stuff for were me. almost the same, just the one guy. We each had yeah, a different one. Yeah. Yeah. Like we had four of the same guys, all four, three of us. Let's do in order. This is the last thing we're gonna do on FML Friday Morning Live for this episode. Last thing we're gonna do. You gotta introduce is, it like uh, SNL. Like. You're watching Friday Morning Live. <laughs> You're watching. Wait, you want me to do my breaking news, guy? <laughs> my nasally broadcaster? Good morning, everyone. You're now watching FML Friday Morning Live with Jordan Newman, John Newman, and our favorite guy, Dan, Dan Tortora. You gotta change your name to Newman. That's part of the, the contract. Yeah. Newman Cubed. <laughs> so, this final list is going to be in order. 
from one to five, number one being the best, and five just making the list, your top five most exciting quarterbacks to watch Ever? this season. Oh, my. This season. This season. Most exciting? Most exciting to watch. Put the team. The ones with, up. let's say, the highest upside, so to speak. So, all right, so that's two different questions. Okay, so we're going to do the top five. Top five quarterbacks that are, yeah, let's say with the biggest upside. Let's do top five biggest oh, upside. So, like, potential. Yeah, biggest okay. potential quarterbacks. All right. So the the rule would be they don't they they don't they're not us, elite. You gotta give us. The they're team. not they're, so they can't be these guys. Are oh, we doing that on the back? No, we can we can. Uh, I'll give you a new sheet. So they can't be these guys, is what you're saying? You're gonna have potential. No. like golf probably can be up there, but I like. Yeah, I mean, no, he can definitely be up Brady, there. Brady Rogers, Breeze aren't gonna be up there. Yeah, we're talking about potential guys here. The guys who have the biggest upside currently. I think I have my five. Let's go. So we are going to go in reverse order this time. So I will give my five first. These are the top five in order quarterbacks currently. I didn't put mine in order. Just so with that. the biggest upside. Well, you got to do that. That's part of the rules. So these are mine. Number one, Pat Mahomes. Number two, Jared Goff. Number three, Carson Wentz, only because of injury. Number four, Baker Mayfield. And the fifth one was hard for me. It was Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen. But wrong I'm going Josh. with my gut on this one. You went with the wrong Josh. I'm going with my hopes on this one. And I figured that somebody was going to put Josh Allen. But Pat Mahomes, biggest upside, Jared Goff. These two guys have a chance of making the Super Bowl and uh, definitely the playoffs this year. Carson Wentz, if he was healthy, he'd be higher. Baker Mayfield, I really like him. And I just feel really good about I I feel like Josh Rosen, he's got to put on some muscle, but... Josh Rosen above Josh Allen and above Sam Darnold, slightly above Sam Darnold. I put him in my top five with Christian Kirk. I think he's got a good young weapon that he can build some cool things you around, really like and Christian he's got David Kirk. Johnson. What? You really like? I Christian do like Kirk. Christian Kirk. I do. I think he. I think he is going to take over and be the number one guy when Larry Fitzgerald is all done. All right, Newman, John. These are in order now, so. Go ahead and tell us your thoughts here. I went with Wentz, one, and Goff, two. And you like the draft itself. You could probably switch them. Yeah. And I went with Russell Wilson. I picked guys I didn't pick on my top five. You know, I went outside that. Okay, so you think so, Wilson, for as long as he's played, you still think he's got some upside? Yeah, I think he, he does a lot of what he does with not a lot of weapons. And he is exciting to watch. Yeah, but I think he's... Reached his peak. I think last year was the best season you're gonna get. Still fairly young. Interesting though, because if you look at my list with Mr. John Newman's list side by side, you look at these lists. We both have Jared Goff two, and we both have Baker Mayfield four, and then we have different Josh's five. So tell us, tell us the reasoning behind the rest of this for you. So I went after I went with Mayfield. I believe he's the real deal. I think. Cleveland's finally got their quarterback. He is fun to watch. I hate to say it, being a Steeler fan. I could be a hand model, but and, go ahead. And uh, <laughs> Josh Allen, fifth. Uh, you know, probably be better if he was in a different situation. But if they get some players through subsequent drafts, yeah. You know, he's got some of the skills. He's got arm talent. 
Um, if he, you know, makes some maybe a probably better decision making. He's got too many ifs right maturity. now. There's too many ifs on the team for me to pick. But I think he's got. Well, you know, we talk about potential. He's got. He's got some of it. You yeah, know, what, his was it also an accuracy thing, but he can throw the long ball, which they were never going to see with previous quarterbacks. Jordan Newman has these gentlemen. Interesting. Um, I, I think Luck, Lux was really good when he was healthy. He's been hurt. I think he... So you, he, you don't think he's reached his peak? No, not at all. He's so, missed two years and hasn't been able to... I, I think he's going to... And a half. He's still... Andrew Luck, when he was drafted... was Well, a, maybe that's why you can put him on the list, because he's missed almost three yeah, years. Yeah, I think when he was drafted... So he's drafted, technically in his, what, third year When now? he was drafted, he was almost a home run. There You couldn't miss, and I think he's still that guy... I think once he gets back, he'll be top three quarterback consistently every year. Yeah. Mahomes obviously hasn't done anything wrong. And I th- he's got the arm to be one of, the, especially the way he throws. He's going to go downfield whenever he can. Yeah. So I think that's going to, you're going to put up good numbers regardless. Okay. And then, then you got Carson Wentz. Wentz. I, th- I think Wentz, similar to Luck, I think they're both kind of big, strong armed guys. I think they both can lead both their teams. We equaled each other on that. Carson Wentz at three. And then Goff, I think the situation he's in really helps him become one of the top guys. I mean, he has guys ever around him in McVay. By the way, the fair better sponsor us or let us be there next year since I'm helping you out right now. And then Josh Allen, I think the situation isn't great. Yeah. But arm talent-wise, he can pretty much make every throw. It's just cleaning up accuracy. Yeah. So I, I he has all the tools to be that guy. So let me ask you the question, and here is here is a question right now. You can have, and I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you each back your sheet of paper. You can have one guy. You can have. I'm gonna give you the guy. I'm gonna give you your choices. You can have. Andrew Luck. You can have Baker Mayfield, Pat Mahomes. Let me think of who else I want to put on this list. Carson Wentz. Who's going to lead your franchise? Out of those three? Out of those three. Uh, Carson Wentz, like easily. No surprise you here. I'm going to go with Mahomes. I am going to... My my see my my thing with Carson Wentz is injury because he did lead them technically, but Nick Foles finished it was a the freak job. Injury though, he dove into the end zone. It's not a it's not a Leonard Fournette. My hamstring hurts every week. Yeah, but he's he's been hurt twice both of the seasons. I look at kind of like Mahomes. He's like a game manager with skills. He's not making yeah. mistakes, and he can make big plays. I think normally I would have Wentz, but as of right now, in this exact moment, I'm picking Pat Mahomes. I think it's Wentz easily. Wentz has shown he can do it throughout a whole season. He got injured late in the year, but I mean, he can all year. He's still. But I got to see him play a full season and then finish it. He's still ended the season with the most touchdowns, and he missed second most. Second most, yeah, and he missed what three games? Yeah, no, I mean he's good. He's definitely good, but in the here and now. I want Pat Mahomes leading my I offense. think Mahomes is really good. It's just we haven't seen him overcome a great defense. Right. I mean, last game he played a pretty good D and came back on it, like a game-winning drive, which I think is huge. But I, I still would rather see it more than four games. And I think Wentz has shown he can do that throughout, you know what I mean, his, uh, the whole season. Fair enough. And I think Wentz is your stereotypical quarterback, big. Tall, you know, big arm, good play action. He really does everything really well. There's he and he can run when he has to. He's not, you know what I mean. He's not a uh, stand back and get blasted. He can move if he has to move. Yeah. So I, I think once is if you were to build a quarterback, it it looked just like Andrew Luck. This is where I say M- FML for other reasons. FML Friday morning live with. You can't tell me Luck isn't your stereotypical perfect quarterback. Are you? Att- you mean you're attracted to him, or on he's and got, off the field? He's got, <laughs> he's got a Nick Chubb for Luck. You know. Listen, he's a, he's not a bad looking dude. This neck beard isn't too bad. I like I, I like your neck Andrew, your I can neck do beard. An Andrew Luck impression. This neck beard is very much possible. I can do an Andrew Luck impression. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you know, Dad, I was doing... He doesn't talk like that. He doesn't talk like that. He doesn't talk like that. He, just he makes... I when can he do, doesn't... That's not how he talks, though. He just Wait, hold on. I'm going to do a Frank Reich impression. What is it? 
fourth and twenty six on our own three, go for it. That's no, my Frank Wright. No ties. If he ties, he ties. <laughs> We're here to lose the game. Exactly. So for all of our other people Alter Eagles. as well as ourselves, we are here with your late night talk show in the morning, FML, Friday morning live, born out of wake up call with Dan Satora breeding another show inside of a show. We appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much. Find us every Friday on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT and WakeUpCallDT.com where the MixLR feed is at 10 a.m. on Fridays Eastern Time. And you can also find us on Facebook Live on Facebook.com backslash Live Now. DT for FML, Friday Morning Live, inside of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Gentlemen, we talk about it. We never know what we're going to talk about. We never know what we're going to do. We just promise you a whole lot of fun and our own unique personalities. So we appreciate it for Jordan, for John, and myself, Dan Tortora. Thank you all so much. We'll see how we do with our predictions and how things can go forward from here. And the only fitting way that I know to end this broadcast, the only way that I can find that just makes so much sense more than anything else, this year is not with this, not with this ad when I'm trying Don't to do you it. Hate I mean, those YouTube commercials that come on when you can't. <laughs> Let's get a little bit deeper into it here. Can't you see this face doing that? <laughs> I don't have a voice. That was actually the song they played for Frank Wright coming out of the, uh, coming going going into the locker room out of the tunnel. Yeah, waste damn. waste of a quarterback. Craziness, craziness, folks. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. FML Friday morning live, and we're inside Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you. Good night. And good luck. Uh... <laughs> We've been here all day. <laughs> We're going to become Saturday Night Live. Well, we can't. That's already mm-hmm. taken. So Friday Morning Live might lead right into it. And, you know, and we will never say what Pete Davidson said, which apparently is that Syracuse is trash. He's also said some other pretty disturbing Some pretty, yeah. And he's yeah. also made fun of his father dying in 9-11. You know, that's, that's what I was going to say. You know, it's yeah. funny. When Jordan was younger, I'll have to get a picture. He looked like Pete Davidson. Not really. He didn't yeah. look like Pete Davidson. That's true. Let's hope you didn't. He but. did. I just want to say Andrew Luck, top three quarterback potentially in the league for the next 10 years. Ben Roethlisberger is elite over the last 10 years. He's always got to get the last word, right? You're going to have the last word. doesn't mean it's true. Roethlisberger is clearly. Said it last. <laughs> <laughs> Remember yeah, that. The right, last yeah. word just means you said something last. It doesn't mean it's accurate. In this, in this case, it is, though. So. Roethlisberger is clearly an elite quarterback. Available for autographs and opportunities Friday not, morning I'm live. Signing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Look at he's doing a good impression of Johnny Manziel. We'll talk with you all soon. God bless and be well.